Hey, welcome back. Can't tell my mic is on. Yeah, it looks good. How's it going? It is. I got this open apparently. Oh, I opened a new window. Oh, great. How's everyone doing? It is the 24th of September. Uh, we got some networking tonight. How's everyone doing? Yo, Zero. Jim, how's it going? Mark Andre. Hey, hey, man. How you doing, man? It's been a minute. Uh, how's everyone doing this evening? We have some Netrunner tonight. Uh, looks like I nailed everything. I ate really weird today, and I think I eat, ate like two cups of peanuts on an empty stomach. And my stomach feels weird, so uh, we'll see how I hold up. Also, I used to have too much boom shadow because the light used to be over there, and now it's over there. And so now you can see a different like shiny spot on my greasy forehead. So it's a brave new world out here, honestly. So that's really exciting. Um, I just realized I left the window open. I'm going to turn that, turn the window off one second. Sick, 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 sick. That's way better. Mark Andre just said, just purchased my tickets for Worlds. What day are you playing? The one that makes sense for North America or the one that wildly doesn't? Sam also, how's it going? Parallel, what up too? Evening friends, how you doing? Giles, hey Andre, chat fam, yo, what up Giles? Nataki also, yo, how's it going? That new fancy window you can turn on and off. It's actually like a, one of those old crank ones that's on off automated uh, with the crank. Um, but it's, it's, it's served me well, so I can't complain at all. Um... We're gonna play some Neverner tonight. It's Worlds in two weeks. I think that's a good thing to plug here, is that it's Worlds in two weeks, and you can buy your tickets. They're thirty-five U.S. dollars. Uh, Worlds happens across two and a half, three days. Day one A. I think this is the one that makes sense for, uh, for people in North America and people that are in the Western Hemisphere largely. Uh, it starts at ten thirty PDT, which is about yeah middle of the afternoon here uh and then day 1b makes no sense uh for anybody else besides europe i don't think it starts at like five in the morning around these parts and then whoever does well that will come uh, back on sunday uh and then there's also a bunch of side shows or side events and stuff like that i definitely recommend you participate in this we talked about it a fair bit last stream um but it's gonna look really cool uh i can't guarantee anything so far but i have signed up to do some commentary i won't be playing um, I'm looking to do some commentary, so we'll let you know soon, hopefully, uh, how that's going, but I'm really excited. And talking about like Nisei type commentary stuff, um, it, some people have flagged before because we did some commentary on the Intercontinentals and the Continentals, and those VODs on Twitch are gone. Um, and I was pretty bummed out about that because it's like really good games. They're really, really worth watching. Um, but you actually can still find them. Um, they ex ex exist. Project Nisei has a YouTube channel. I had no idea about this. Um, so this exists. You can watch all the games here. They're all vaunted. Uh, I don't think Nisei has ever publicly shared their their YouTube channel, um, uh, but that's really cool to know. So if you want to watch any of the stuff, it's all here. I think the Black Lives Matter tournament isn't up here for some reason. I think they're going to look into that last I was talking to Michael, but uh, check that out. That's pretty good if you want to watch some Netrunner content. Good stuff. Also give them a subscribe. I reckon they'd want that. Vale is running an ANZ warm-up tomorrow, 11 a.m. AAST. Oh, so cool. A warm-up. ANZ is uh, the New Zealand Netrunner scene. Is the A for Android Netrunners or for Australia and New Zealand? I honestly don't know. Uh, but yeah, they're running a world warm-up tournament um, starting... Is it just straight up tomorrow? It's Saturday the 26th, so technically two days for me, but tomorrow for a lot of people. Um, that's on JNet, so that's awesome. Uh, entry fee is 10 Australian dollars, which is like an American dollar, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and there's surprise important stuff. Check that out. Arc Lockdown. That's a, a pretty bold card. Um, that's really cool. And there's already some registered players. That's super cool. I'm excited. It is stand for Australia slash New Zealand. Oh, cool. Okay. I thought it was entirely a New Zealand scene and that's, um, Android New Zealand, which is great. Um, that's awesome. I hope that goes well. Uh, again, this is like the weird time where, um, if you go on Netrunner DB, people aren't sharing deck lists because people are like homebrewing, people are testing, and people are trying to figure out what's going to win worlds. We did have the ban list changes that take pl uh, actually come into action, I think, tomorrow, uh, the 25th, technically. Um, but people have been playing with those probably since they came out and testing for them. But like we don't have people posting decks anymore um, because people are tuning for worlds. So we're going to do some of our own testing. Um, I kind of want to like bone up a bit on the material to figure out what's good. So... If we do commentary, it doesn't sound too dumb. Um, hopefully we'll get there. 
Uh, I'd be interested to know when anybody's playing what looks good. Uh, I have no doubt people might be holding their cards close to their chest, which is kind of, I guess, important to some extent. Oh, yeah, this weekend, actually, we did do some streaming. Uh, we did stream. Um, I'm interested to hear feedback about this for sure. Let's see if we can find our channel. Um, we did stream the Nemec card series, uh, which is like now 550 cards. We streamed this. Now, this is the Nemec 1.1 video. So we streamed for about like five hours and we played with uh, most of the new cards, not all of them by any sort uh, means. But we played this on um, JNet. Uh, I had a lot of fun. I'm interested to see how many people tried it. I, I, I think in retrospect that we might have missed the mark a bit here. Um, I think we definitely should have done this probably on Tabletop Simulator again. I think there was some excitement about like, you know, having a JNet mirror. That's definitely a lot of work goes into that. But like the fact that automation doesn't work on a lot of these, it's, it's probably a lot harder to, to, to tinker and play with them than on something like Tabletop Simulator where it's easy to move virus counters or like host cards or stuff like that. So I think, I think this might have been, also like the cards are so small in fucking JNet. There was no way to zoom in, right? Um, but otherwise, it's pretty interesting. The Nemec card pool is always really fun, especially there's some like some cards designed specifically for Pat. This new Apocalypse idea is a lot of fun too. But uh, we played some gross stuff, some NPE stuff. No hesitation there. Um, I'd be excited to see the stuff if it does make up its way on Tabletop Simulator because I think it might be a bit more approachable there. But also, if you played on Nemec's Mirror, we shared the link. It's just down here in the comments. Uh, I'd be very excited to hear what you think. I only saw the start. Really love Pat playing standard Apex. <laughs> Pat played like two new cards in his Apex deck, which is, you know, you got to give him a hard time for that, I guess. Yo, Baza, how's it going? How are you doing? Sam says, I'm betting on Bird Breaker, Con Sweeping Worlds. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Worlds is going to be fun. Worlds is going to be fun if Con does well, huh? Man, we got to rebirth into Lois more, huh? Um, this is a good time. Definitely check it out if, uh, if you want to see some new stuff again. I also think uh, I got a message up from Nemec. We definitely could have replaced these card backs with so they didn't say Nisei that Nemec has their own card back. I don't know whether it's their own design or whether it's like just a, a standard Netrunner stuff. So it's less confusing that these are not Nisei cards. So maybe that branding was a bit silly, um, but it was a good time. MAD was nuts. Yeah, Giles. Yeah, Mad, the, the sort of apex. I think it's a virtual resource. I think they all have to be, right? That is, it's pretty mean. Um, it's really mean. It said spend a click to forfeit an agenda. You gain four, the corp loses four. I think the only way I could possibly win this matchup was like by the Jinheki card that I was playing, which is really cool. Got on some games with friends from work. Our scene was quiet when COVID took over. Good to play again. Oh, stop. What kind of stuff are you playing, Bessa? That's really cool to hear. I've been playing a bit with, more, uh, with my brother who, um, I think I've mentioned this before, who played Netrunner, had all the cards for a while, but stopped playing around Mumbad, where like a lot of people, Mumba, a lot of people stopped playing. Uh, and we've been really enjoying this, like, um, oh, I keep forgetting the name. Startup? No. Quick boot? The, the, the big boy uh, server that will automatically generate you a deck, that has been like really, really approachable. I found that a really fun way to pay, play pickup Netrunner, which is cool. Argus and Outfit. We're also rusty, though. Lots of accidental flight lines. Yeah, accidental flight lines count it. Oh, Giles, Jumpstart. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Jumpstart's been good. I like Jumpstart. Cool. Um, today, the deck list of the week is a CTZ, so it's always a bit spicy and funny. Um, this list doesn't have a write-up, I don't think. It's just like one sentence, and I don't... I, I I don't I don't even know what this means. I feel like I'm outside of a joke here. Take my entry. Uh and I guess we'll play it. Um it is a bunch of big barriers and some trebuchets. Our win condition is probably no, oh, it's punitive counter strike. Well we do have a legitimate win condition here. And we have both fast track and DRM, but fast track doesn't really work that well. I guess with the agendas, maybe you can fast track a city works project and then dedicate it. Maybe that's good enough. Um, and then we have reverse accounts, but that only works a punitive. We don't have um, hard hitting news. I don't know. Are we meant to take this one seriously? We have Chiachi and Data Loop. Data Loop's really cool with punitive. Um, I, I, I don't know how in meta, I guess you can always check like some of the recent deck lists, but how in meta um, Hunting Grounds is. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll give this a shot. Why not? Outfit's always fun. JNF format. Ugh. We have Worlds in two weeks. I'm not even registering that. It's during Canadian Thanksgiving. Um, I don't know how big of a deal Canadian Thanksgiving is going to be this year, considering it's like unadvised modernly. It's I said that in a mocking tone. I don't mean to at all. It's modernly like really unadvised. I think we got a message today in Montreal saying like, hey, guys, maybe don't do Thanksgiving uh, if you want to do Christmas because things are not going as well as anybody wants them to do. 
So, uh, I took some time off. We'll see. What is it? Man versus stress energy? Cool, let's go. CTZ knows he can make you play whatever decks he wants. You're in trouble now. Yeah, I know. <sighs> Fuck. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I don't know how transparent the algorithm is that gets this to the front page. Um, I don't know what it takes. Not a lot of people are posting decks here, but I guess we'll just have to kind of ride whatever the storm throws our way. Let's give it a shot. Just play aggressive. <laughs> You're in trouble. It's a meme, but you can totally make agendas impossible to steal. Yeah, I, I believe it. I think like just like the CityWorks project is such a strong card. Obviously, Punitive is really good. Uh, the outfit, we still have Trebuchet. I think we have Bulwark, right? Yeah, like that's just good rush ice. And it's really easy for us to get on game point. Just one SDS. Or sorry, City Works in a Hostel. This deck used to run a lot of times SSL endorsement. That is a change you had to make with the ban list. So, yeah, it's probably not that much worse. Maybe even better against certain cards. Oh, we have building blocks. Oh, that makes sense. All right, so we have digital rights management in our hand, but we don't have a thing to dedicate. Turn one, Hoshiko likes it. I'm going to mulligan here. Yeah, this is what we kind of want. We also do have Argus Crackdown, which is interesting. It's hard to do with five threes, but the idea is that you can still make it hard to steal as long as you have to ice up the, the server. So um, we could just go for the CityWorks dedicated advance. How bad is that? CityWorks dedicated advance. So they'd have to take four, five, six me damage. And then we're not even threatening punitive. I don't think it's that good right now. What do we do on this turn? We're getting Rashida off would be pretty okay. I uh, would get our money up and it would probably draw us into an econ card. Uh, and we could do just like data loop into Rashida into credit. Then we hold four cards. They generally poke R&D or HQ because they won't have ID. Oh, bummer. Hopefully the move goes okay, Sam. My wife is okay with me going to Toronto for Thanksgiving, so I'm good to stay here and play online. Heck yeah. Baza, how hard are you prepping? Uh, are you grinding? Or are you just going to play whatever's fun? Ooh, Cyber Trooper to loot. That looks like it's the Aesop's Pawn Shop build. It's also a very interesting card. If I saw this, I wouldn't assume we're on 5-3 agendas. They can decide to trash that they want. They do. Wow. So now they get two credits. They're going to lose one. We technically have the credit lead. This does give them a link, which we have to remember for the punitive trace. And they have a link there. <laughs> All right. So we don't have money. Exactly, but we can do city works. We can in theory do double dedication, but I think we want to spread these two deadies out. And we can advance this once. And we still have a punitive here if we really need to. So if they go all in, we might have a response. Face covering chat log, yeah, thank you. Deuce is liberated, slow start. Probably we're going to get this city works out. Hopefully we get some money to follow this up with. And they're going to weave in and out of their Hoshiko accesses. I guess we can store it. Here we can probably do credit credit. So Argus only cares if the, the server is iced. It doesn't have, you don't have to res the ice if I'm not mistaken. So just having something somewhere is probably good. Yeah, just remote just has to be protected by ice. Yo, Fluffy, how's it going? I'm rusty as hell and it was never good to start with. I'm playing my favorite IDs in yellow. Gonna enjoy the side events of putting together a watch party for finals. Heck yeah. Man, I miss watch parties and that's, well, I, I think there's a lot of things to, you know, that have changed modernly, but we had some good times just hanging out and watching stuff together. My hair's a mess. It's fine. Uh, triple draw. They're up on Liberated again. They have to find breakers to get through this. And uh, Boomerang will do it. They do have the paperclip in the bin. And the problem is if like we res the ice here, we're not really threatening um, the City Works project. And as much as possible, they're just going to hold on and get as many uh, cards in hand or I've had worses in hand for them to interact with us. They have all their breakers. And their breakers come in like pretty efficient with Cyber Trooper to loot. So we could probably just give them the first City Works project. We could do like City Works Dedicate, so that's five damage. Now, if they have an I've had worse, they're on three, so punitive doesn't work, let alone the money will be tight. We could always do like install reversed, dedicate, flip, that's 12. Oh, that's exactly what we need. This is okay. Oh, why did I throw it? That was a misclick. Excuse me. We need that one. 
You could take away their money. Yeah, we could. I kind of want to surprise them with it. Like that's a good surprise when you uh, when they finish the liberated. Um, and also once they ran, but we don't have hard any news. But if they steal something, you can surprise them. It's just hard to do all of it. All right, they're gonna swing into Hoshiko. Again, they do have two link. Slow or the reverse doesn't seem bad. It doesn't seem bad, but I'm pretty sure they'll charge this when they have uh, Cyber Trooper to loot and we only have seven credits. Like we can res maybe the border control. They break it for six. It's pretty good. But then we're on three credits. <laughs> this does nothing. I think we might want to slow roll this. No, it's really hard because we have to like pre-install this. Here, I think we might want to just reverse the counts of them. Because they'll be on four credits. That seems pretty good. Yeah, I think we could do it. This will just slow the game down. No hard hitting news follow up, but that's okay. SDS no res is pretty funny. Oh shit, you're right. I think SDS no res is probably the window there. Uh, one I've had worse out of their hand, that's good to know. Uh, with two credits, they could play Deuces Wild, they could play Dirty Laundry, but it's hard for them to do much else besides click for credits, so they're in an awkward spot. I think you're right, jamming SDS actually might have been the play. And counting the I've had worse, here they're probably crediting up just to, so they can play a gamble, and they have to throw out a lot of stuff here. So they threw in a Black Orchestra MKL with paperclip, so wow, yeah, this actually might just go through. Uh, they could throw out the one Stargate they have. They might have Data Sucker. But I think actually they don't need Data Sucker if they have Cyber Trooper. So we do install Advanced Advance. In theory, we can still threaten the res of the border control. But if we res the border control, they obviously can paperclip. So we're going to try and not do that. And again, once we do this, it's all about R&D. And then we have to find the... We did throw out the digital rights management, which can sometimes protect a, a hostile in hand. I think that SDS res is actually pretty good, especially now that they've thrown out all their breakers because they want to throw out their breaker. Oh, actually, Cyber Trooper doesn't need it, but it's better with the Cyber Trooper that they throw out their breakers. It's hard for them to predict what they're going to need here. And they're also scared to interact. Like if they run here and this is an NGO front, um, they could be in hard hitting news territory pretty poorly. Excuse me. <laughs> they're thinking. Stimhack, sick, so sick. Stimhack server one, I'm assuming, right? Undo click, okay. The Stimhack would have been a free brain damage. This is actually like a really reasonable play now without SSL. Yeah, there you go. That's that's what they need to do. So they could they can steal it. And they can also imp it if they really wanted to, which is probably the right play. Man, that imp is really good. I think this deck already runs like one imp, one uh, Stargate, if it's the deck I think it is. So we can just pop the border control, but then we can't score it. I think we do pop the border control. Ugh. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, I'll quick end to run. So they can't spend any money on that. They lost a patchwork. Oh, sorry, you can't play Bricklip. Cool. Yeah, they don't have a timing window there. All right, we'll do too big to fail. Of course we need to. And here we have a data loop. So we could do double data loop. Again, they don't have to steal this thing. They can just imp it. But this is only six to break, and then this is only two more to break. It's not the worst. If we install this, this is actually pretty good. Their paperclip comes in at three strength. Yeah, we'll probably do this and just click for credit. It's good enough, right? Can they afford to get through data loop? Um, yeah, I think so. Because they had nine stimac credits, so they had 11 credits. So this is only six to get through. And then they put two cards down, and then if they're smart, they would imp this and not steal it. Um, and then if that all happens, yeah. It looks like we bought ourselves a window here. What about simple purge? Purge doesn't matter because the imp doesn't get trashed. It's not like Lamprey or or, uh, or Tapworm. They can still technically steal this, but I see what you mean to purge this to remove the counters. I just, I think it would be too slow, especially when we have no money and we res there. 
The thing is, like, we're going to trash it anyways if we score this, so the purge is a bit useless. We're on game point. Now the top of R&D is all that matters. And they trashed a DRM. Oh, no, they trashed a border control, excuse me, with the imp on top of R&D. Yeah, exactly dope. Yeah, they still have a program. Yo, Kaka, what's up? Decklist of the week or world's prepping? Uh, we're going to get to world's prepping after we play the decklist of the week once or twice. It should be a fast deck because it's the outfit. How are you doing, by the way? All right, so now we can win off Hostel. In theory, we could also win with the City Works project. We're going to just need a bit more money. This deck has hedge fund, right? Yeah, okay. No IPO, though. And they do have a Citadel Sanctuary, so the meat damage play will need double punitive and a lot of money. So that's not amazing. Uh, okay, I think we can just hopefully draw into the hostel. <laughs> uh, Arcus Crackdown helps a bit. Like, Arcus Crackdown with double um, data loop is pretty scary. That's four damage, and then the punitive has to prevent all trash all cards in their grip, so that's not, it's, it's kind of meaningful. We actually could build a double data loop server. Wow, double data loop server is, like, kind of cool. I'm not drawing last click. I regret it too much. I'm doing okay. I've been playing loads of Gloomhaven and doing Barkham Horror this weekend. Oh, yeah. Nice. Uh, Maddie and I finished Jaws of the Lion, I think, two weeks ago. And I would highly recommend it as a nice entry point to Gloomhaven. I want to play more like legit Gloomhaven. I've been playing the, uh, the, the computer version, the digital version a lot. Um, it's not the campaign, but it's good. But we just picked up Barkham, I think, two days ago. And it looks so funny. And uh, just like straight up funny. It looks really funny. And I'm really excited for that. Yeah, we have two more SDSs. The whole list is three SDSs, three CityWorks project, and two hostels. The hostel obviously is the most uh, valuable agenda right now. Uh, excuse me, for, they trashed Rashida and they used their turning wheel, so they know the next card in R&D as well. Really struggling to make a competitive Apex for worlds, especially how fast some corps are. Yeah, Apex is definitely going to be a struggle to make competitive for sure. On the bouncing turning wheel tokens, that makes sense. They want to lock us. Another TBTF, but we don't have the money for that. I think we want to put the Chiashi in R&D. Uh, Trebuchet is actually pretty good, too. If, when they install their breaker, it comes in at four strengths. Um, they don't know we drew this, so that's a three. So it would come in, sorry, at three strength. And then you still need to spend two, three, six. It's still eight credits. It's, it's a pretty penny. The Chiashi might be better, though. Because then this is five. But they've spent nine. Okay. Whatever. I kind of want to do the data loop here. Double data loop seems pretty cool. We can get just lucky. We want to have bad face checks on all our central servers just so they can't farm tokens. Oh man, I don't know what to throw out. The Argus team is like really funny. This is our, obviously our economy. So it's either the trebuchet, which for them, when it comes at three strength of the boost, it's six to break, or this, which is more potentially of a win. It's probably the Argus is the worst card, but I want to try it out. Oh, especially because we res this thing for four. They do have bad pub. What about pushing them to steal the City Works project? We probably could do that. It's just like, it represents a win condition if we have double punitive in our hand. With single punitive, it's pretty hard. Even with, like, they probably have an iPad worse in hand. So it's, we could force them to do something, but I want to force them so they can't. I want to force them to, to get this agenda if we have another one the next turn, right? Like they steal this one and then the next one, they have to go again through data loop and then they have to go again. Uh, oh, that's actually really, really scary considering our suite. Okay. Okay, that's a start. But like this is very slow. Actually. Just put this here so we're not weak to... Uh, uh, we're still weak to turning wheel farming with Hippo, though. And our ice is so expensive, it's going to be hard. Bottom, what up? I had a punitive day loop RP deck. I was really happy with it. And then SSL Ben hit pretty hard, and now I'm sad. Ah, oh, bummer. That's another one that like Kakugo was really good in, eh? Right? Sorry to hear that. Taki says, I just bought Jaws of the Line today to play with the BF, and one of the monster boards was misprinted. What do you mean one of the monster boards? Like, one of the player boards? Or like one of the monster like squares, because like uh, Maddie and I, we played that almost entirely with the app, uh, like Gloomhaven Helper, and I'd kind of recommend it. It helps a lot. It's really good. What's your favorite plastically in Gloomhaven? I love the summoner. Just pretend. Um, well, I haven't played enough Gloomhaven, and I don't want to spoil any of the classes in Jaws of the Lion. I did play uh, the Hatchet and had a lot of fun, and Maddie played the Demolitionist. 
So we were kind of not tanky. I, I'm pretty sure the other two classes are like way more tanky. Fuck, that's a hostile. That's a huge hit. It did change tur turning one tokens for that. Our Gloomhaven set has so many misprints for the enemies. Really? Are you using Gloomhaven Helper? We could install this ice and then we could be able to too big to fail. Now we're drawing through their R&D lock. Okay, so this is the situation we want it to be in. So we can ice up a server. And then TBTF out. But they have a lot of money. So we want to push this and the next turn push the second one, I hope. I wish we had a dedicated because dedicated means that you can play City Works well with Argus Crackdown. The punch out board, it got flipped upside down in the misprint, so the boss cutout is over some of the other monsters. Oh, that's awful. That's really annoying. All right, we have 17 credits. That's enough for technically both the eyes. I don't think we want to res both the eyes. The helper app, we switched over to a Chromebook for it so me and my friend can both see all the deeds. If you want with the helper app, you can put it on like a tablet or a phone and you can all sync them together locally. So like I was putting in my initiative on my phone and then once I hit go, it would show it on like the, the iPad. Um, it was really nice. We even had a, a TV next to the table if we really wanted to. Um, 10 out of 10, would highly recommend. Okay, so I think the only thing we res is data loop. They have a huge credit lead, so punitive is going to be almost impossible. But here, they can't steal it. Oh, they'd have to use their Citadel Sanctuary, which would discard their whole hand, so we can only land a single punitive. I started playing this in my first ban list, so I never got experience losing Kakigo. Oh, okay. I still think you could do the list. I, I'm aware SSL is a problem. Maybe you can import some. So they only have two cards. So they have to CityWorks project. They have to steal it or they lose the game. So now they have to trash all cards in their grip. The problem is we can't land a single punitive, can we? Or can we actually land... Oh, they could have citadeled that. Oh, GG. You could citadel. Yeah, I, I don't know the math is on citadel. We ha They have 22 with link. They're gonna have 22 credits and two link. So they actually probably could survive this. And then we just jam the next one. Ah, oh, fair enough. Yeah, so if they get this one and they do everything properly, we just jam the second one and then they have to get that one while they have no cards in hand and then it's going to be six cards for them to steal it. Like, data loop into, into CityWorks is pretty wild. My group had to put our normal Gloomhaven game on hold because of COVID and then a move. Oh, that's a bummer. We were in the middle of Betrayal Legacy um, and that we had to stop because of the situation. Let's do another one. Yo, my stomach feels really bad. Real bad. Majesty, what's up? This deck seems like it doesn't have enough money. It definitely doesn't. It has a really high uh, um, econ curve. Um, I think it's trying to cheat out a bunch of that by having uh, building blocks, which didn't come together. Like, it was all big barriers besides border control, and then building blocks didn't come out. Uh, and then we, this deck also could have IPO. I don't entirely see the fast track. I think you want to do, like, fast track for city works. And then like advance Argus or like dedicate Argus or something like that. But like DRM is probably playable. But I don't think this is meant to be like a seriously competitive deck. Yeah, what up, Jim? Currently doing Cronus Protocol and everyone seems to be surprised to see Punitive. Yeah, um, I, I think that's like something that isn't in all the lists. Like some are just doing complete image neural Salem's, but I think Punitive was in a lot of them before. And I think it's good. All right, their hand size is tiny. And we have Argus Crackdown, which is fun. This hand is a bit of a liability. We can always just do install advance advance and they can just steal it. And then their hand size is a problem. So like we have this weird window if they're playing their console, which I'm assuming they are. Um, I'm gonna mulligan. I think we just always want a dedication in their hand. Well, this is awkward. At least if they face plant a trebuchet, there's just no way to do all of it. No, there is. Oh, it's it's not legal until tomorrow. So I don't think it enforces it. Yeah, dope. There's no consulting visits in this list. Benjamin, what's up? How's Betrayal Legacy? Um, it's weird. <laughs> uh, it's it's weird. Um, can you remind me after this game? Because like that's gonna be a bit of a conversation. It's interesting though. It's, it's actually pretty interesting. I was also in the middle of a Betrayal Legacy game with COVID hit plus a weekly D and D game. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. 
Back to your programming is great for finding the cards you need to kill. Yeah, right? And it puts punitive incomplete image online. It feels unfair. I hear you on that. Uh, okay, so they're going to double access HQ, and we don't want them to steal this at any costs. Uh, Rashida would also be pretty good. Now, they couldn't obviously... Oh, no, I think we'll just jam behind a Chiyashi. They could logic bomb it. But we install this face up. Rashida's scary, too. If they hit this, though, like, we trash uh, one of their things, and then they lose. I think we could just play a bit slowly here. We'll do HQ, we'll do R&D, and we'll gain 10 credits. That's probably good enough. Pad tap. Oh, okay. So that's why. Uh, corporate defector probably shouldn't matter, but pad tap is the reason why their deck is not technically legal. This card has been since banned. All right. So if they run HQ, they'll definitely get an agenda. And the Rashida's going to give them pad tap dollars. They actually have a lot of money. They opened up pretty well. Sure gamble pad tap and then some cheap installables to keep their hand size going. Or their hand draw going. But like again, maximum hand size of three. If we draw a dedication with Cityworks Project, it's nigh unstealable. I don't know if they run any damage mitigation. Logic Bomb though, that's going to do it. And I hate to res a 12 cost face check ice. Ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, we have to res it here. So they're going to steal this and not take the damage. So if we draw with Rashid into a punitive, we win the game. If they also hit this, they have to trash it, which they will hit it. So they're going to be on very few money. So we just need to hit a punitive and we'll win the game. We don't have a consulting visit, so we just have to draw into the punitive. They will get a credit from Rashida. They drew Rizeki. Draw punitive win? Fuck. The Rizeki we can eat with the SDS drone deployment. So we can either score the SDS drone deployment or draw into attempt to draw at least twice into that. So we get two draws. Our chance of drawing uh, is like three. It's like one in 12. It's three in 38. So it's not amazing. I think we'll just push for the thing that can win. Eating Rizeki would probably be fine. You think attempt to draw? I feel like attempt to draw throws off the turn so hard that it might not be worth it. I might might ditch Apex plans. What other IDs will be the least played? I want to make hot jank. I was tempted to run New Angel Sol for Corp. New Angel Sol is almost definitely going to be the least played, unless there's like a lot of hot memers. They just drew an Earthrise. Um, I really want them to play the Rizeki into this SDS at all costs. Um, that's probably it. There you go. I don't know. It's like incredibly bad. Oh wait, we win the game. GG. Yeah, it's four damage. They die. Shit, GG. <laughs> All right, that's four damage. So it's pretty safe usually uh, to face check into Wayland stuff. Like, the what's the worst case? Well, it's it's bad if they play Rizeki first because they can hit Trebuchet, which I guess we'd probably hit one of these, and then Bulwark will eat the Rizeki. So if they face check here, it's usually not that bad. Like, Chiyashi is, is spicy. <laughs> uh, you got three more influence, huh? I come back. Got some Fs in chats. Yeah, that's rough. You don't see a lot of, like, for a, a, a card that does four net damage, you don't see a lot of flat lines with this thing. And, like, a Nancy does four net damage, but not the way you think, right? Okay, uh, Betrayal Legacy. So, Betrayal Legacy is an interesting game. Uh, Betrayal, I've only played a couple games of it, but it's largely, like, I would imagine it. Hey, cheers. Uh, I, I largely imagine it as a narrative-based game. I wish it would be more of a narrative-based game than it is because it, it tries to be more of like a stat-based, like you have three actions a turn, plan your turn, plan your stats sort of game. Uh, kind of similar to like Arkham Horror in some ways, the card game at least. But I, I think it pulls it off really, not really well. Um, the idea of the game is like you're inside a house and you move your person around and then you enter new rooms. And when you enter a new room, you develop a new tile from a stack of tiles. And so the house is always different and it, there's like many floors. And each room you come into, you either draw an event card, which does a thing. Um, uh, yeah, it does a thing. And then you can do a test based off of one of your four skills. Um, and then you like roll a dice or something based off of that. It's been a minute. Uh, or it'll be an omen check. And then you basically get a haunted card and there's a check for the haunt to happen. Uh, Betrayal Legacy doesn't change that at all. Besides, there's like there's some persisting stories and effects where different room tiles will be added or changed. Different rules, different characters will show up. Uh, the Legacy aspect, so far it's done a couple like cool things. It's worth knowing that I've never played a Legacy game. 
Uh, so like, I don't even know that sort of excitement of like a uh, legacy, uh, what's it called? Pandemic, where it's like there's a big change and it changes everything and you have to rethink everything. That doesn't really fundamentally happen in this game as far as I've seen. And I think we're like 60 to 70% through it. Um, I think that the... <laughs> Jim, womp womp. Hey, good game, man. Um, I, I think the big struggle I have with Betrayal Legacy, and this might just be a betrayal thing inherently, is that what happens generally, there's a haunt. And generally one person is the person who's doing the haunt. So they have to go to a separate room and they have their own rules that they have to read. And then the other people have to read their side of the rules. And it, it's specifically, you're not meant to know what your opponent is doing. Uh, they have their own goals, you have your own goals, and it's all hidden and obtuse. The problem is you, you can ask uh, some, there's like some groundwork of what you can ask, like, what are you trying to do? But they don't have to explain everything. Um, and I found, and at least in our group, it, it gets a bit catty. Where like, I feel like the ways the rules are written, there's like so much confusion in it and it's really easy for the person who's doing the haunt to like not understand the rule set entirely their way and i don't blame them and so then it becomes like i don't believe you and they're like no it's in the book i, I it feels like that was happening a lot where it's like what you're capable of doing people will be like that's wildly unfair um because it is sometimes the person who is doing the haunt is incredibly unfair and you're trying to figure out what to do to bring them down um and it just feels like none of the systems that are trying to hold up like they require a lot of faith um but a lot of times we were just like unclear about how the rules should be interacting in certain situations the game has like this language where it describes actions with like proper nouns uh not proper nouns excuse me with like verbs and, and bold text uh and it's just i don't know it it wants to be like a mechanics rules heavy game like systems heavy game but i think the part that succeeds the most in the game is the narrative aspects like this story thing happens and now we're like in terms of the story trying to deal with it but it's always within these like kind of clumsily put together uh systems that are pretty strict with how the rules work but not very good at explaining that at least that's what i got to i feel like we were bickering about the rules a bit too much uh and i wish it was kind of more like Maybe uh, if you've played, what is it called? 1001 Arabian Nights? Is that the actual name of the board game? Which it, like has another sort of game like that where you have stats and systems, but it's all nonsense. Largely, it's like, do you want to drink the tornado? What happens when you choose that choice? And the game has something for you when that happens. Like, I feel like the game would be better f positioned against that or to that, if that makes sense. Have you played Vanilla Betrayal? Yes. Yes, I have. And it's not that far different in terms of the legacy stuff like there's a story uh this is not too big of a spoiler but when you start the game you pick a family and then the player you're playing is always within that family and then there's some like cool things where like you mark certain cards and they become family heirlooms so that if you draw that even if it's like 10 to 50 years 100 years later you get a bonus because it was your family heirloom it's been that uh there hasn't been too much that i thought like really really elevated over the betrayal um situation but in theory it should right because like they can tell which haunts you're going to have in very similar to that it really is was td a legacy style game td terminal directive regular betrayal on the hill is peak beer and paint peanuts games hilarious randomness and i love it that's the thing that i totally agree with the talkie like if it was more like randomness and it was just kind of more silly fun and again more of a narrative game i think i would enjoy it but the fact that it presents itself as like you have three actions and then you have to like make efficiency with your actions and it would be like okay your strength is six but my strength is five so if i go first i'll weaken it like that sort of arkham horror high stress min maxing like how to win came up too much in our game and i feel like the ambiguity of the rules and you know there's some that are uh, a bit more interesting um if that's interesting i don't know we're talking about betrayal in the house on the hill. Yeah, Raven, totally. Hold on, let's just let me catch up on chat real quick. Had pandemic legacy on, never started a group, and I could just play Arkham instead. I've heard uh, everyone says really good stuff about uh, our uh, pandemic legacy, barring maybe the second one is a bit more polarized, but it's been pretty great. Basically, come one versus three or five, and the odds are heavily in favor of the one. Yes, but you can pull it off. It's fun if you pull it off, I guess. I disagree. It isn't a system game at all. It's incredibly narrative. Okay, Ian. The bold word action thing does a lot to clarify the rules over Vanilla Betrayal. Was that not part of Vanilla Betrayal, Ian? The bold rules thing? There's also like a lot, a lot of like, um, ran not variants in the game, right? Just the, the way that the game uh, plays, like when the haunt happens, it comes down to a dice roll, but the dice roll is like impacted by, you could just get like really bad rolls and the haunt could happen immediately, which I think really disfavors in most situations. Uh, the people that are not the betrayer, so like you just have to kind of be okay with that and also like that's a big thing about this game this game so far from what i've seen doesn't care who wins things and that's has to be if that's important to your group like oh i won tonight's game of betrayal like 
I, 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 it doesn't feel like the legacy game v cares about that so much, um, which is fine. Like if you play as a narrative game, I think it's cool. I like Tales of the Arabian Nights, says McCallumane. You just need to understand there's no strategy. You just play. Exactly, yeah. Uh, my sister and her boyfriend will have Arabian Nights out on a table for like a whole weekend day while they're like doing chores or like, you know, just being people. And they'll come by and do a move and talk about it and leave. And they won't sit down and play. The, they, they will. But sometimes they'll play the game like just as a day event. And I find that to be charming. And I think the game is totally cool like that. There's a built-in problem with the base game of Betrayal. The rules explanations need to be rock solid to allow a single person to understand them with no ability to confer with other players. And it just isn't lol. Yeah, Robert, I think that's exactly the point that I'm trying to land. Is that like if somebody doesn't have a good understanding of the game rules and specifically the way that they describe the game rules with different boxes and this sort of like font weight is something you should tell people and this font weight is like your primary objective and these rules overweigh the base core games of the rule. If they don't get that, like the haunt is just going to be fucked and there's no way for you to intervene with it if you know the rules better. I sound like a dickhead, probably, but that's the idea. I mean, <laughs> Seafall's a big skip was terrible, just awful. Pat played all of Seafall, and he said it sucked. Terminal Directive was a legacy game. Terminal Directive is not good. Um, and I can't plug this enough. I watch this every year or so. Uh, is this still on Trace 5, or is it on the other one? Watch this review that Trace 5 made. Oh, man, Christian made this review. It's about a, uh, an hour and two. It has like comedy is a hard thing to 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 nail um, or to the, the, some parts of this are actually proper funny, but his analysis on it on it uh, is is dead dead right. Uh, there was a lot of a lot of problems with Terminal Directive, so many problems with Terminal Directive, and it could have been obviously so much better. Um, I thought Terminal Directive was awful, and I know the 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 variance in people's experience was such a big deal with this game because this game one of the key things i think it did poorly terminal directive it didn't reward people who failed and i think you need to do that in a, in a legacy game from my understanding uh betrayal not betrayal uh, pandemic does that really well oh you're failing here's something to help you but in this i knew so many people who played the whole campaign and never won one game and then the other player who's winning a lot of games just kept getting better stuff because this game rewards winning uh there's so many problems with, with terminal directive i really can't recommend it i can recommend this video though this video is really good Betrayal's many instances of narrative flavor with the only mechanics to tie them together. Betrayal at Baldur's Gate is a nice update to the OG game. That's a thing? Always when playing with a new player, they're the traitor. <laughs> There's a lot of confidence where it's like go into another room on your own and learn the rules of the game. Sorry. I wish they made more things in the style of Terminal Directive. I think there's so much potential. I think there really is much more potential in that format. And for what it's worth, like Arkham Horror kind of scratches that itch of like, here's a thing that is a narrative that has like discrete endings and choices uh, that shapes your future uh, campaign decisions. Like uh, Arkham Horror has been pretty great. Curse and Bless maybe is different. I've heard King's Dilemma is so good. I've been in the middle of a King's Dilemma campaign. I even wrote a bot for, because uh, we were, oh man, we were going to go digital with King's Dilemma and play remotely. And I even wrote a bot for Discord that will let you draft uh, your hidden roles at the beginning of the game. And I was pretty proud about it. Um, and then we played like once or twice online. And then I, I just don't think we had the same, um, it felt different. Like that game is, you, it's, you get out of it what you invest into it and when you have more people around a table maybe people are imbibing alcohol um it's it's a different experience so i think we're gonna wait for that to come back um when that's like a thing you can do again uh it's been really really fun and that game is really good at giving you hard decisions where there's no right outcome it's fun i got t for 10 bucks australian oh man they're literally giving away i want to try the king's dilemma intense political legacy game yeah exactly kaku that one's really fun we've been enjoying it the bold word thing was a new thing to make it clear what you can do. The original is very wishy-washy. Oh, I didn't realize that, Ian. What happened to Trace 5? Missed their content about starting streaming because we need more Netrunner content. Trace 5, um, I pop in every once in a while. So they, uh, shit, Trace 5 YouTube. Christian has been doing some like pretty cool game dev stuff. And on the Trace 5 channel, he's been doing a lot of videos where he's explaining his game dev process. Uh, or it's not, no, that's not Trace 5. That's back on Teamwork Cast. Trace 5, uh, they've been doing stuff. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kelso is still doing stuff. I'm uh, thinking Christian, who is back on. Oh, that's my search history. That's probably acceptable. Oh, I Google Breaking Ball every once in a while. It's pretty good. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, on Teamwork Cast, Christian is doing um, game dev stuff. Uh, he does a, some game stream stuff, but he's doing game dev stuff and he's uh, doing stuff on Pico, if you're familiar with Pico. Uh, this I don't know anything about. He plays classically, a channel was a Monster Hunter thing, but. Where all the Netrunner videos two years ago. Where am I? Am I mistaken? I'm pretty sure Christian was doing like Pico videos and released a game and I saw it and it was sick. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? 
Trace 5 Teamer Cast is still one of my favorite channels. I still watch the 10 Reasons to Try Netrunner video. Oh, hey, Vril, how's it going? I don't know if I know that one. But there's some really good stuff on here. Um, Chris Jones is a really nice dude. Uh, shit, but he was making stuff. He really was. Maybe it's his own channel. Is it Christian Majewski, I think it is? Yeah. No, this is not it either, but this is him. I don't know. I remember watching, he would be making games. Uh, he would be doing game dev stuff, and he would be making vlogs of him doing the game dev stuff at the same time. And he was making stuff for Pico, which is like this kind of system that's really cute. I got my brother one for Christmas once. Uh, I can't find it, but it was good. He released a game sometime and recently. It looks actually pretty fun. Kelf took over the YouTube, then he quit. quit. Oh, I didn't realize Kelf quit New Rhino. Uh, Netrunner. Pico 8. Yeah, it is Pico 8, huh? Yeah, Celeste was originally a Pico 8 game. You can play the original Pico version of Celeste within Celeste. Except for Leela to rotate. Yes. And no. Sort of. Uh, sorry, Robert. I missed the start of this conversation. Are you trying to find a new legacy game to play? No, not exactly. Somebody just asked. Uh, not somebody. Uh, Kaku asked? Who asked? Excuse me. Oh, Benjamin asked, right? Um, about how is Betrayal Legacy. Uh, I, it's hard to modernly pay legacy games because game groups don't really exist in the physical space. But uh, I'm still playing Arkham online in person, so it's great. Uh, what are you looking for? I was looking for Christian has like a Pico 8 channel, right? You're probably 80% of the way through King's Dilemma. I had the opposite issue with King's Dilemma. My group started playing online when we all went to lockdown. It's hard to get people together to finish it off. Yeah, it is. Um, okay, uh, Lila rotating. Yes, I feel like Lila rotating will be kind of a brush of fresh air. Breath of fresh air. I do think Lila, though, is a very high skill cap runner. And I like that her... Uh, her um, her ability is not like a passive thing and you actually can play around it and it, you can make some very good decisions. Some of the best Leela players like Dave Hoyland, like watching them play is an absolute treat. The whole idea of like Dave Hoyland's, Hoyland's waltz decks, I think speaks for themselves. And I feel that there's no other criminal, maybe even no other ID that I think has a built-in skill cap. All the other ones are just like, how much efficiency can we grind out of this shit? Uh, and I really like that design a lot better. Um, I don't think noise is a good design, but I think noise is a more interactive design. I'm aware that you can play noise entirely uninteractive, but the idea that your choices will have a bigger impact on how the game plays out as opposed to like, I'm 419, do you want to pay a credit, right? I, I miss that. I really do miss that, but I think you're right. It's pretty good. It makes 5-3 gen as a liability. Uh, Bladam, is there any way to see what's rotating? I honestly don't think so. I think Nisei wrote some articles on it, but a lot of this is just like, I think you have to read Nisei articles. I don't think there's like a, an easy section that says like, this is going to go on this date, which, you know, probably should be. Uh, from my understanding, the next cycle and the next expansion deluxe rotate, I don't know if they're going to be happening together or what first, but it'll be the Sand Sand cycle, which will be a bummer. Uh, and the order and no honor and profit deluxe expansion. Lacres, I'm going to open up a YouTube link without screening it. Pico 8 tutorial. Yeah, oh, it is on Teamwork Cast. Look at you. Thank you. Oh, it's Lazy Devs Academy. This is the channel. Excuse me. This is the channel that Christian's been doing. Um, it's a lot of game dance stuff. Like, he's updating this regularly, and it's your boy Christian explaining how to make games in Pico 8. And it's, like, really well put together because Christian has a background in video stuff. Uh, and he's clever. Uh, it's a treat. It's really cool. Check this out. Uh, he released his game. It's about, like, pigs or something? Shit, he released it. Yeah, it's a pig game of some sort. Anyways, do check this out. And you can watch him building the thing basically in real time, which is really cool. He made a cooking game and they're like really small games, but like that's the point, it's Pico. And then you get stuff out, which is more important than like working on a thing for seven years and never releasing it. Never had that problem on this channel. Oh, fuck. Uh, anyways, thanks, Chris. That's awesome. I guess I was just disappointed that it didn't feel like one of my favorite childhood games and a visual copy of Divinity. Huh. Just joining in, but does the title mean we're digging graves tonight? <laughs> Jester, no. Uh, we're meant to be uh, meant to be tra a training for Worlds, so we're going to play some, I guess, 419. Sorry, everyone, 419. 
I've always found Leela too swingy. If they hit early, they probably win, but maybe I just haven't played it against enough Leela. Yeah, Leela has a really brutal turn one, right? Like where they don't ice R&D, you rip something off the top of the deck, then you bounce HQ ice, you diversion of funds them. Like that is absolutely garbage when that happens to you and it feels like you didn't have a lot of control over it. It also makes 5-3 agendas a lot harder to play. Anything you double in advance, like they bounce it off any central and there's a huge like target on you. So Leela doesn't have some, does have some very strong effects, but I, Leela I like giving to new players and being like, hey, do some damage. If you're training to play, is that confirmation that you were not commentating? No, um, I'm definitely, I can't say I'm definitely commentating. I've signed up in the pool of commentators. Um, so I'm looking to commentate. I'm definitely not prepared to play. <laughs> I love the old D&D &D video games. Oh, this is probably Baldur's Gate, right? Boo 419. No, no, no. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. No, we got to do this. Uh, there was a... Who posted this? There was a... Yeah, Longy. Yeah, Longy posted this 419 deck that's a bit more tuned for Glacier, which I don't know if it's necessary, but it has some spicy includes. By spicy includes, I mean a single Triumph off contact, but this list also has Pad Tap. What are people doing? 419 and Acid done just when world's easy. 419 has not done too well at any of the Continentals. 419 didn't win any of the Continentals. 419 was representative in the top cut, but I think mostly only in Asia Pacific. And as the tournaments went on, 419 was largely replaced by by Lila. I will be surprised if 419 wins content uh, wins worlds. I'll be honestly surprised. I feel like Freedom has a chance. I feel like Hoshiko has a chance. I feel like 419 has. I feel like Leela has a chance. Uh, Geist has a chance. Uh, maybe the Shaper lists. Good people play Shaper really, really well, uh, regardless of the meta. So maybe a Haley. Uh, maybe you'll see something spicier than that. But like, I would not put 419 over any of those, I don't think. <laughs> cool, we'll be wrecked from all them killer whales. Drunk driving, eh? Or you get leg worked. Play as all the good tech cards at Connections. <laughs> <laughs> value town i want to try this and see how it plays look if y'all don't like 419 just we can commiserate in chat and then we'll try something else i just it's been a long time since we played 419 on this channel i think it's important to know what it can do this version also ha we have to change because it's not legal what is our pad tap replacement Four nine is so easy to play because you don't have to change the identity that saves you literally minutes every week. So we can't play this. So what do we play for money? Yeah, I was going to suggest Miss Bones because we don't have one, which is weird. And then Paul up, but that's not money. Miss Bones is money. We can maybe play too. Yeah, I need Bones scenes, right? Second Caddy. Second Caddy is okay, but there's a lot of matchups where Caddy is not playable. Like against four, uh, against Ocelists, I think it's really hard to get value out of Caddy. Uh, I think two Miss Bones is fine. Polop is also like an interesting card. Um, it doesn't work with Miss Bones, but it's definitely very good. But I feel like the pad tap represents slowing them down in economy. Like, do we just play um, uh, Tapworm? I always included a one to sec if you want to tech. You just keep four and nine in check. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. Once they find it, they're going to not expose stuff anywhere. Yeah, Diogen says Tapworm. I think Tapworm might be right. Tapworm slows them down, right? Data Dealer. Is Data Dealer even good in the meta? It used to be. Okay, I'm gonna try two tapworm and a single Miss Bones and see how much we'll regret that. Yeah, let's see how much we regret this. Yo, Jankivus, how's it going? Tap or another DL. What's DL? Oh, Dirty Laundry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, pretty good. Dirty Laundry is also, for what it's worth, is really good with tapworm. The fact that this list has like two bravados is strange to me and values career fair over bravado. I find that weird considering how much people love bravado. But like this does ha deck has three class hacks, so I think that's why it has that many career fairs. I don't know how I feel about that. Career fairing a class act is crazy, right? It's like one credit to draw four. That's okay. That's not okay, is it? That's all right. We'll do this because we put taproms in it. Wait, what did I just take out? A class act. How far do our career fairs go? Far enough. Is Argo Lockdown still a card? You think it'd be more prevalent with all the reliance on paperclip? Uh, it is a card. We don't even have Am Why don't we have Amakua? We don't have Amakua, which is generally like a thing you can do um, to get around paperclip. You can always pre-install your paperclip though. Uh, we did see like uh, Tug to Good was playing uh, Arc Lockdown and uh, somebody else was too. Um, the Hungarian player? I forget his name right now. Dinya? 
Is it, is it Dinya? But there's another player who was playing. Two players who were playing a lot of lockdown in their Wayland lists. Uh, just because, yeah, uh, Paperclip is like a, definitely a liability. Also, SDS drone deployment is kind of on the rise uh, in Wayland lists. So even for, uh, for Corpse excuse me, for runners, criminals that don't have recursion. That's why a lot of these lists are running more than one copy, but also like they don't they don't have any way to tutor it. Sam is just suggesting bankroll. This deck probably doesn't run enough to get value from bankroll. Like we don't even have a, we're not even running a, what's it called? Not Desperado, whatever the modern Desperado is called. Procomus, yeah, Dinya. Okay, thanks. The pick says I've seen a few people run our clock down. I wouldn't be surprised. I think it can definitely be a very relevant, relevant card. I like sec testing. Oh yeah, sec testing is an option. Sec testing Amakua. That's a nonbo, right? Yeah, it's not nonbo, but we don't even have Amakua. Okay, CTM. So this deck also doesn't have um one of the best cards you could have a four one nine in the matchup. Thanks you too. Yeah, we don't have uh Citadel Sanctuary. We do have Falsified. We have Turning Wheel, but we want to mulligan into a Miss Bones and a Dirty Laundry. This is okay. We got a lot of economy in our hand. If they don't ice up HQ, we could like do a diversion and then force them to res stuff. Uh, for what's it worth, CTM did lose gold, gold farmer. Maryland campaign and server one. Whoa, okay. I made a meme about paperclip and arc lockdown. I mean, oh, no worries. I'll just not do that there so they don't have to pay it. So we know this is a Maryland campaign, so we could trash that. That's all good. Oh, no. <laughs> no, all good. So we don't know what this is. This might be worth checking. A diversion of funds is we don't have Amaku, so we can probably just use this freely for draw. Draw two first. We're looking for Miss Bones. We don't have Miss Bones. Man, having a Citadel versus this matchup is so important. I feel like I probably want to always play Citadel. We do have two Rizekis too. Mulliganing into Rizekis would have been good. Uh, Class Act also would have been good off the top. Uh, a lot of these decks aren't running Mumbad Virtual Tour, so we'll check what this is. Oh, it's double Maryland. So it's going to be three to trash this, three to trash the second one, and then three to clear the tag. If we trash one, though, we trash two. No, they can pay to res this shit. We'll play the daily cast, and the next turn we can do like gamble into trash a bunch of stuff. We're not drawing though. Shit, where were we? Sorry, one second. Double Maryland's. We want to get that down. Miss Bones would be good, but we don't have any card draw. We can draw once maybe for a draw, but we have to keep their money down. If they don't have money, they don't have anything. Always has been. Wait, my paper clubs removed from the game. Nice. Yeah, this is the sort of list. Of, oh, not Jemison exactly, but uh, we saw that sort of like idea in in, uh, in the outfit. I think it's pretty relevant. The fuck? Really? So either we pay seven here. Or we clear the text manually. Okay. So we can draw a dirty laundry. Fuck, we're so good at this game. Rashida, can't trash it. So they're going to get four credits, but they've already spent a lot. So I think we're just going to do uh, draw into Tapworm. Yeah, I don't think we need to gamble here. Okay, and next turn we can do like, it's clumsy. We can do credit on a come uh, gamble. So the Maryland's definitely represent a lot of money. We we probably want to trash those. It's probably more important than the Anacom. So it's a tour guide. If we trash those, the tour guide's bad. So that's the Rashida behind there. So we want to force them to res the tour guide. So we'll do gamble into run this. And here at the click for credit, they give us a credit. So they probably don't want to do that. We'll see what they end up doing here. They just drew because they didn't want to give us a credit. Makes sense. So we want to get the Rashida down. So we'll make them spend three and then we'll just wipe the board. We can float one tag, I reckon. 
Go back and kill Rashid's. Yeah, maybe killing Rashid's was right. But the thing is, like, I guess they can always res Rashid's to give tour guide a subroutine. Trace six? Do they really care that we have a single tag? They actually might be on, like, closed accounts. But they're probably just getting rid of the tap worm. So we're going to float a tag here. Okay. We just want to get a card draw going. Like, class act would have been really important. Watch that they're playing Psychic Field TTM. <laughs> I feel like I played a version and I sniped both Begulters with a single Salams. I had to run through a Nazi so many times. Ooh. So Rashida, three credits, a lot of cards. Their tour guide doesn't do anything right now, but they have a lot of cheap reses. At least it'll give us information. And they can always just put a Rashida behind and res it. And like, we need to install this bad boy. But then we actually make money breaking this. As much as make money thing. So that's a Jeeves. So that's something they can duck the diversion. Uh, they probably have enigmas in their list. Uh, IP blocks, maybe? They can't have gold farmer anymore. So the barrier got a bit weirder. We do have to clear this tag. We have another Deuces Wild in the deck. But I think we want it for the card draw. Maybe we do card draw and clear tag. Oh, wow, market forces. We got goofed on. Ooh. So that's market forces. That's, in theory, better than close accounts there. So they lost three. Gain three. We lost three. That was upsetting. Now that's actually really bad for us. This is why you have Citadel. That's a Jeeves. If they res a triple click, that's fine for us. I think we have to just like slow down. Like they have a lot of work to do before scored. How long can I stay under five? So I think we'll move the tag click three. We could throw the diversion here for a double. They're probably res an enigma or something. It keeps their money down, but we can always do that next turn. Like they also d duck with the Jeeves. And if we hit this since IP block, we take another tag and it will end the run. So it's not the best. I think we'll just do this. Feels bad. Pog forces. Hell yeah. There's a Jeeves, okay. So now it's harder for them to duck. They could triple install here. They don't have a, uh, what's it called just yet? Like a, um, there's probably agendas in hand, right? Cause they don't have a, they've drawn with Rashid and they don't have a daily business show. Team sponsorship. So they're on probably three team sponsorships, three uh, Maryland's to get the Jeeves. Something in server three. And if they uh, get that going, they can rec return the Rashida, which is very important. Yeah, we really need miss bones really bad. But then the tag is still going to be a problem. Like, we just need to stabilize. This is where we drawing a, a career fair would be sick. We're really good at this game. Shit. That's rubbish. That's really bad that we drew new economy. That's Rashida. This is going to get away from us really fast. They actually could have an agenda on the table. And the cool thing about Rashida is, like, it's kind of a bad time for them to purge. Considering they do have seven cards in hand. I don't even think they mandatory draw. They should be at eight. We also have seven. And before Amani. Ooh, Amani would be a thing. The thing is like class act. With, sorry, with career fair, we don't care too much about class act being bounced. But we know it's team sponsorship in five, six is unknown. So Amani is really hard. They couldn't score this turn. Triple install again. So their board state is just going to be such a big problem. Man, clicklessly removing the tags is such a big deal when we do it for free. Expose a different one. All right. Let's see if it does. Could we a new class act? We could. It's a Maryland, right? There's another team sponsorship. So there's two team sponsorships on the table, and they can res them for two. Which they might actually start resing just to duck the, the credit from Tapworm. And Theory plays around Falsified. Which we have three of. So triple install. Sponsorship unknown ice. And they have a click back for Jeeves. They probably want to res stuff. I don't know. Maybe you res around Tapworm. It plays around Falsified. I think it's okay. But right now they're going to score like a Beal. Even worse than ARES into like double team sponsorship. Uh oh, new card in survey. We're going to get a tapworm credit if they're not resing stuff. Oh, they're resing. Playing it right. Double team. Okay, here we go. No money for us. Sure, gamble diversion. We'll take the gamble. 
Still so hard for us to play it. Good thing with them scoring though, at least, is they're not gonna get money from it. I don't see a play besides this. The fact that we don't have Amaku as a threat, like we could have one solution to tour guide. We don't have it. We don't think we have it in our hand. I don't think we're gonna second class act soon. Maybe we should actually. Best of luck. Hey, thanks Kaku. Thanks for dropping by. Yeah, we could consider keeping that just to uh, score it out. It might not be the worst. Okay, so they're scoring out. Oh, it is an Amani. That's fine. We have another career fair. I don't care too much about this. Because they're on zero. And they're going to put a Rashida back, though. That's the only issue. And Amani's so hard for us. So it's we spend two credits to keep a class act around. It's probably fine. God, Amani's so annoying. We need Miss Bones. We didn't put two Miss Bones in the deck. We're so stupid. We should have. Just Blind Divert. Blind Divert here is really bad. Just because they don't have money. And Rashida's coming back in server three. And they have to pay a credit there. They're not going to. It doesn't matter. We don't have Amakua. I hit no for some reason. It's fine. It doesn't change anything. This feels so bad. We're not generating pressure. Like, we don't have Stargate in this list. Yeah, we don't have any pressure in this list besides the Turning Wheels. And then the money is an issue. Like, we need good money. Like, we need Rezeki's or we need, um... When did that happen? Oh, right. With, right, Jeeves Click. It's a daily business show out there. We got our Anakam purring. Next turn, we want to career fair out something. We can draw here. I don't know how good the boomerang is. The Rizeki is a lot better. Yeah, this is brutal. I let him bounce for the card draw. Yeah, we could have paid one to draw money. Yeah, you're right. I think we do bounce because the career fair is in the hand. Yeah, yeah, I think you're totally right. Pink two there is wrong. And now this is where like we're behind. So like unless you have Stargate or a way to like amass a lot of pressure, it's really hard to catch up here. Good thing is like Begalter's not too bad at dealing with this. Oh, they keep goofing it, unselling a card wrong. So you know there's a, they didn't res their Baelish business show because they couldn't. That's a pad campaign in server 10. That's another card. So it's just triple install. Double install credit? Wild. Oh no, they did triple install credit, excuse me. Sorry, things are gonna get really small here. If we divert, they can res uh, the two two costers. We know eight and uh, nine and ten, right? So it's not really good. This is so bad. I think we just have to say fuck it and start hammering centrals. I'm career fraying that for the draw. Yeah, we're just gonna go in. We're going to ignore the board and hopefully we can win off centrals. We can't steal Bologna. It's a Maryland. Okay. Here we could get hit by Enigma, which would be worst case scenario. It's a resistor. Okay. That's fine. We can always pay through this if we really want to. It makes the diversion a lot harder. What's your argument against turtle in this list? Seems like you don't want to play turtle, then you should not play 419. I don't. I was super surprised to find there'd be no turtle in this list, I'll be honest. Uh, they also could hit us in theory here with a uh, hard hitting. I don't know why there's no turtle. I think it's because everyone is running IP block, but if you run like Citadel or like Hunting Grounds, it's not too bad. Honestly, I'm super surprised. I think the biggest reason that this was built for uh, to deal with uh, Glacier, like this is not in the new meta. So this is probably trying to deal with game net um, and against game net. That's why we were running like Caddy, Jones, and Trimoff, and it's not too good against anything too wide. And Amaku is really good against wide stuff. Like all this is zero strength shit. Like we would just goof, goof in on him. They could hardly use us here. I think they forgot to res something. That's what they're asking. Oh, they're thinking. That's okay. So they have a window here. Most of the resibles will put them down to zero credits. They just drew a Maryland campaign, which is worth knowing. And we do have, we're trying to play an event every turn. So that's a Maryland, right? 
That's an event every turn, just so we can get our uh, Anacom. That's a 15 minutes. Shit. Tempo 15 minutes. So they probably actually end up bouncing the... The turning wheel? I don't think they can afford the bounce. We pay one credit. Rashida and server 13. We want that dead. Double Rashida. Okay, well, we have to deal with that. So we'll have to clear the tag manually. Oh, actually, no, we don't. Oh, Caddy Jones is not the worst. I just feel like it might be a bit too slow. Especially if we lose it. Like, we can't flow tags, but we can't flow tags anyways. I'll take the daily cast. Caddy Jones is actually worth considering. But they can score a Bologna pretty trivially, I think. We can't put this down without a th the final career fair. Oh my god, we're so good at this game. Holy shit. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. We shouldn't have done that. We should have done that next turn because of uh, of uh, Anakam. I think it's definitely worth it spacing it out till next turn. We'll just click for credit here. We also could have bounced for another turret token. There's a Marilyn. So it's Marilyn pad. Uh, we don't know eight, I think. I think we know that this is um, business show pad tap Marilyn. Trashing the Maryland's actually probably worth it. We probably should have done it that turn, honestly. Yeah, we definitely should have done that a turn. We forgot that that was there. You want to trash multiple things every turn. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, they're going to pay. I'm not going to expose it unless I'm going to say no here just so they can't pay a credit so they can't dock our pie tab. I've never done that before. But they can always just res something. That would maybe a mistake. <laughs> Rude. Yeah, I think I was just read something like res, res your pad campaign. Yeah, there you go. They were definitely baiting us on that. Okay, so it's not good to play uh, daily cast first click, but with Anacom, it's fine. Spec order turning wheel. Uh, yeah, spec order is fine. So this represents a lot of money to them. We need to keep their money down. There's probably an agenda in here, but I don't know if they want to score the beal just yet. I think they probably would. 500 IQ plays. I think, I don't know. I think we need a Sam Centrals. We're like so far behind. If three credits, we haven't seen a Mumba Temple yet. This could be server 15. I think 8 they would have rezzed. We have Bologna credits, but I don't know if it's a good idea. Let's see if they hit us with an Enigma here. Enigma is the worst case scenario because we have to drop either Boomerang, which we could get, or an Anacom, which is not an Anacom, an Amina. Yeah, there you go. There's the Enigma. That's bad because our uh, Amina is like uh, 300 credits. And we don't have Amakua, so we need to Boomerang this, which is like kind of bad. So this is unlikely to be the last Rashida, so I think we're just going to bounce Centrals. Or draw. I think draw is probably better. Yeah, that's good. Next turn, that's like three card draw if we really want it. We can also like maybe trash something and then clear a tag at tempo. Yeah, I don't know. This is a, definitely a worse 419 Lich against this matchup, but definitely a lot better against something else. Also like pad tap against this matchup was such a big deal, right? Like you can't have a uh, pad campaign running. You can't have Maryland running. Like we make as much money and it's hard for them. Like their econ's so bad if we clear everything. This deck probably doesn't run hedge fund. They can't afford to clear our stuff like that. They've been playing aggressively under this tap worm. I think we got a credit once maybe. Still worth it. It's no pad tap though. They didn't get purge here with Jesus. They really wanted to. It doesn't sound amazing. I'm worried what's in server three. And also, if we hit a Bologna, they get the trace off, which is a problem. At least we're going to dump our turning wheel into that. I'm not considering that at all. Second Rizeki would be sick. Then we're like, scrubber. Trashing stuff is so rough with team spawns. Uh, yeah, but like trashing the team spawns means that they won't come back. We're betting on the fact that we're better at stopping them from scoring than anything else. I, I think this here is probably the, the fast advance card. This here is probably, um, you know, the one. Ah, oh, we shouldn't have let him pay one there. We'll draw first. Bravado, Falsified, or well, the other two are really good. Okay, that's good. Cali testing, thank you. Yeah, I think they're setting up for a Cali testing play here. So we probably want to interact with their money. 
Uh, I think we know server nine is a daily business show, so we can get easily uh, four credits. So we can maybe do a double trash turn this turn. Or we can set up next turn. I don't know how bad that's going to be for us. Pretty sure we know this is a daily business. Yeah, we know. We could also flush hand. I think flushing hand is probably fine. I'll try and flush hand. Because if they're setting up for a Kali testing, they might have it in hand, but I think they would jam anything else. There's probably a balloon in here. We have to pay three for an access. It's cheaper than the five for the paperclip, but paperclip pays on the long run. Snare here would be disastrous. I just don't think they have snare. Beal, there you go. So they're setting it up. So they have a trace here. Yeah, I think there's a Kali testing in there. They're prepping for next turn. Here are the bounce here. I think the worst bounce is probably the turning wheel. No, probably maybe the daily cast, actually. Let's see if they boost into this. Installing the Rizeki before running was stupid. Oh, there's a Bologna. I don't think we steal the Bologna. This is not the first time. This is every time. Because this would be five to steal and then a trace five. Do we steal with Bologna? Do it? I don't know, Floofy. It'll be fine. Like, if they score it, it's a whole turn. It's very hard for them to score. I think we're not going to steal this. We lose our whole credit lead. Like, they're going to be up on seven credits next turn. And then, like, hard hitting news is so easy. Oh, it's a Maryland in the remote. That's super weird. I guess that's them ducking Siphon. All right, they're resing everything. So now they're digging. We know their hand is the 5-3 in it. Maryland campaign, they're up on five credits now. We might get our money worth. They, they have to deal with double Rizeki now. And we always know that like we can if we get another two-pointer off of R&D, which I don't know what it would be. It's probably um uh shit, the new Atlas, not new um what's it called? You know the one. What's that one called? The one where they're looking at the video game thing that gives them uh the Astroscript token? I never remember this name. Yeah, remastered edition. Thank you, Kiwi. Yeah, it's probably remastered edition and then Bologna? But I'm mistaken, because there's like three Bologna's, that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And I think there's two remastered editions. Unless ARES is a thing. Or Quantum. We haven't seen Raven yet. I don't think a lot of these lists are in Raven anymore. Which I don't understand. Raven seemed really good. Uh, especially without Film Critic. It's another tour guide. It's fine. Ish. It's a lot of subs. Oh shit, that's a lot of subs. They're playing so aggressively underneath this tapworm. So aggressively. Yeah, we need to draw into a boomerang. And we don't have a really good uh, event this turn to play to get a free card draw. Like, we could spec order. Shuffles our deck. But I don't want to play one credit just to draw a card. I don't know what this shit is. I'm actually interested in checking this. I would check this. Let's draw once, though. Amina or Amina? Huh. So we could pay nine, and then they lose one. Cute. Try him off. Honestly, probably fine. But we'd have to play it now for it to be fine. I'm worried about this. This is a pad campaign. That's acceptable. I think we just draw once more. We need to find a boomerang. Dirty laundry is really good. I don't think the diversion is ever going to be good. Actually, no, that's not true because they need to res their ice on this remote. We can always threaten to get in. Ah, try him off. We ever playing try him off. We don't need spec order though. The drip is good. They're getting three credits a turn. They might spend two on another pad campaign. We're still looking for a final Rashida. We don't know server eight, and I don't think we know server 15. Okay, so they res the, the Maryland. So that was one of the servers. So then we have, uh, they can't res the pad campaign because they can't use the credits. And server eight is a question mark. It might be another Imani. I don't actually know what server eight is. All right, they're on six. Give us a fucking tap on money. <laughs> oh, eight even. Oh, there's three? The three Marylands? That's news to me. They're also filtering their draw. And we know one card in hand. 
Uh, but we're gonna need those boomerangs. We're gonna definitely need those boomerangs. And card in server three. We'll force an expose. If they do a double advance here, we can always threaten. Like even diversion is a pretty good threat. Because then they can't score it. Yeah, I think we, oh no, with diversion. Diversion they could still score, right? Because they have Maryland and pad campaign. So we have to do diversion into trash Maryland. Oh, and they're resing their pad campaign. That's smart, I think. Thinking. Okay, so they're going to try and score that out. So we need to stop them from having any money. That means we have to divert them. As soon as we divert them, we only have a couple clicks left. Uh, I think we divert them at least to start. It's one credit. We have to pay three to get through this. They could boost into it, but we get a free card draw regardless. So we'll start here. We could also install the paperclip, but I don't think it's worth it. The trace will always be cheaper. Unless they boost into it entirely, which is fine. And then we actually could consider running the remote. We actually could. Seeing a lot of missed bones and more epoch in the meta recently to counter Asa CTM. Feeling Agon could be good? Yeah, Agon is always good. I think it could be. I feel like epoch is definitely a thing you have to deal with. It's a bummer how big of a card that is in the meta. Oh, no worries. Um, yeah, Agon Fusion seems all right. The CTM list is really weak to Apocalypse, that's for sure. And we've seen Apocalypse in 419. They're seeing a lot of lists that are just running a single Apocalypse and whatever they're doing, regardless of the rest of the game plan. If Poc wasn't around, I'd play Paul DLRP. All right, they're tracing into it. That's fine with us. <gasps> Honestly? I don't know what's the right pick here. Boomerang means that we can get accesses, which is important. Miss Bones is the econ card we want, but I feel like we can't control the board anymore. So here we can install Begalter. Then we'd still have 11 credits, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We get two back. Just thinking. So we can either deny them their economy, so we'd have to deny them at least at least the Maryland at a minimum. Um, which is okay. Okay, and another resistor here would be definitely an issue. And that's the reason why we should have installed uh, the paperclip. Honestly, we should have installed the paperclip so that we could have got more money on the on the trace. Like we would have installed for five, and then we would have gone through and we'd taken their three, unless they could rest server eight, which I'm, I have a feeling that it's another Mani or a uh, virtual tour or something. So actually, no, installing was probably the right play by a big margin, because then we would have more money. They would still have had no money, and we would have got something, and then we could deal with the resistor here. So if we install this, we're down at 11, and we run here, hoping there's no resistor. And that's a big hope. If there's a resistor, we have to pay three. So let's say there is one resistor, okay? So then we're down at 14 minus six, we're at eight. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we get two back, we can't steal Bologna. So I think we're gonna just trash the table. I don't think we have to play Dirty Laundry this turn. We can play it next turn for sure. And we're gonna boost the trace. We're gonna play it next turn for sure so we can get a card draw because we already played an event this turn. We're just gonna just flush the credits off the table. I voted Dini Econ. Yeah, I think it's smarter just because resistor is a problem. Yeah, it's fine. This is okay. I think we definitely should have gone through the paperclip. Uh, no, then we have to spend... We probably end up spending another three credits doing that, so maybe not. This is an interesting game. I think that dad's playing this well. All right, triple click Jeeves. So we can't deny them their econ again. I don't know how many falsified we have. I'm assuming it's all of them. I'm not falsified diversion. So we have three more diversion. I think we threw one out, right? Or we buried one. So being drawn to another diversion, we're good. We've only played one so far. And I think we bottomed one, but we're kind of at the bottom. Oh man, why do I keep getting bots? Watch them be a sneaky Beal. That honestly is a possibility, but I think they want to go for big Beal. I don't know if that matters. It's a cow testing? That's their diversion duck. That's interesting. I've been getting a lot of Twitch bots recently. A 
Okay, we're on eight credits. That's good. So now we divert them. They can still do it. We're not Leela. Ugh. It is a Cali testing. They even showed us. So do we just dirty laundry something here? We'd have to dirty laundry something silly. Fuck, I feel like they're going to get the Blona. Six. That's fine, right? If they have to use the cow testing for the Blona, I think we're okay with it. I think we're just going to dirty laundry archives. Oh, we could, we could boomerang Enigma and dirty laundry it. That's probably fine. We can get two accesses. Eh, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should keep this for something more strategic than just like hoping. Oh, we can't. We don't have Bologna credits yet. That's a miscalculation. We could easily hit a Bologna here. Not that we even want to hit one. So let's we'll hit two. Remastered, sick. So now all we need to do is get in there and win. Uh oh, trace four. Trace four, really? That's fine. Man, Amani's so annoying if you can't trash this thing. And we're one short with Bologna. I guess we. Yeah, I don't know how we can get back in here with Bologna. Trace four. So we can spend three credits here. Otherwise, what are they bouncing? I think they can bounce. It's fine. Like, we can pay this and draw money. Draw instead. Oh, it's a... Oh. Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Amani is doing work. So I, I'd probably pay two for this. We're going to get five back and a card draw. Oh, not a card draw because they bounced the Anacom. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, that's a bummer. Such a bummer. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we play this. We don't have enough. And we don't want to play anything expensive because they'll bounce it. So I think we'll draw once for value draw and then smash. Smash HQ probably. Oof, okay. Better good than than lucky. We got really lucky there. <laughs> They're controlling their HQ draw pretty well. And 50 minutes is out, which is a big deal. We just have to make sure, though, every time we're accessing, we have at least five credits because there's two more Bolognas in the list and one more remastered, and that's it. The other thing is, like, if we just had Caddy, we could probably sit back here. Because we got the Beals, so they can't really fast advance anything without pre-installing it. Oh, they have a G's click here, actually. That's a problem. So here's another big trace. Trace 5 after the game 5. Link goes a big way in this matchup. My god. We didn't take Miss Bones, but it turned out to be okay. The fact they have another click to install. This is why you slot notoriety. I know. And I feel like that's even getting more important in the meta because I'm assuming we're going to see more global food initiative than any board before. I don't think any of these cards are worth four. They'll probably bounce the turning wheel, honestly. Maybe the Brzezeki, but I'm assuming the turning wheel. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I would, I would see notoriety as a slot for sure. Ah, team sponsorship. What is it? From HQ? Then like they can do Rashida into, I don't know, prevent to this one. Pat campaign from archives, that's fine. They'll probably res it to duck the, this tap worm does work. Gain a credit. Oh, now they, can they duck it? <laughs> Undo clicks, they don't click for credit. That's a really big deal. That's a remastered edition, they win. And it's only going to cost them six credits. We really need a uh, value drawn to diversion here. Oh, they have a Mumba, okay. They need to dress something else. Other oh, pad campaign, they're underneath, okay. Okay. So much of this ice would be so good against Amakua. I mean, so bad against Amakua. Diversion or Miss Bones? I think we'd have to do Diversion here. Like, they can duck the res on this thing, and then they can probably, they can still win if they have exactly what they need in hand. Right? Like, they're going to have six credits next turn, but if we divert them, they can always just res the, we'll definitely take the Diversion, though. Um, they can res 
a thing. We need to draw into a boomerang. We need to draw into a boomerang. I don't think we have a chance here. Oh, we could. We could just bravado server three. I think we bravado server three. Fuck it. The level of playing going to preventing you from getting tapped from credits is funny. I think it's the right thing though. Like they, they don't have, it makes the diversion a bit stronger. Okay, this is good enough. So there was a resistor there. So charging the remote was the wrong play. And we can pay three credits to get a credit. Fucking value. All right, but that's good enough. Um, what do we not need? We don't need to try them off. We don't need that. We could lose right here. They could have it. They could be the remastered addition into the Cali testing. We're just short a bit on tempo. Is Riel still playable competitive? Yo, Jimmy, how's it going? Yeah, actually, Kit did pretty well uh, in one of the last Continentals. I think it was an Apocalypse deck specifically. Yeah, it looks like we lost. Oh, Jeeves too. Oh, it could be a Blona. I totally forgot about Jeeves. It was a Bologna. They had one credit left. Oh, I totally forgot what Jeeves could score Bologna. I was doing all my math. That's a good thing to learn, yeah. They have Jeeves, that's definitely a real threat. So they obviously, they triple advanced it and quad advanced it, and then they could score it out. So the fact that they, there was only uh, three more agendas in the deck, right? Like two Bologna that. Now they're controlling their draw with, uh, with um, they actually might have had a, two Bolognas in hand when we accessed before. Did you have two Bologna in hand when I accessed HQ? There was a chance. And maybe if we stole the Bologna, we'd had a totally different game. Well, we definitely would have. I, I don't think it would have been better for us. I drew one to turn after. I. Yeah. Checking HQ is a possibility. We could have checked last turn maybe, but last turn went okay. Hoping to see the cards the next game. What is this a game for Ants? I know, it's really bad. And Chain Nut just isn't really great for that sort of thing, unfortunately. Ooh. I think there's another money there. Oh, wow. It's just a Cali testing out in the open. That's fascinating. We got really lucky we got all the Beals. Otherwise, they could have just like cheated at a point there. I don't honestly know if the deck runs a second copy of a... Uh, of a money. Ah. Cool. Even Bologna's a game loss here? Yeah. <laughs> I realized in retrospect. Yeah, obviously Beals is the big threat here. But that's a really hard matchup. I, I think our deck was way more tuned for Glacier. Like, you saw the cards, the kinds of the cards that we drew. Two turns. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, our opponent's asking, where's the Miss Bones? Yeah, the Miss Bones is such a big deal. You put this down turn one, it buys you like 10 credits worth of value off trashing stuff. And again, that's like such a big deal for this game. And you saw like the kind of struggle they had when we started trashing systematically their money is that they struggled to do things. And once like we just said, fuck it, we can't trash the board anymore. That's when things get carried away. The Mani Sanai did damage. But I think the worst thing was like, obviously letting these team sponsorships fire. The Jeeves probably needed to go. Uh, but the fact is like, if you trash most of the things, tour guide is garbage, but like the whole game tour guide is going to be eight credits for us to break. And that's a problem. <laughs> uh, the tap worm was okay. I think they can play around under five credits pretty well. Their ice is, this is the most expensive ice and they do have Mumba temples. They only saw one. All right, that's fascinating. Now, for what it's worth, like, this is not probably the meta we're going to see exactly, considering that I'm, like, so excited to see if, like, proper Glacier is going to exist, considering the changes they did to GameNet. So, who knows? We'll see. Um, but it's very fascinating. This tri is really cool if you get it down early, especially the fact that we have three career fairs. Like, you can play this, like, pretty simply. Okay, I played 419. Despite what anybody wanted, it happened, and it was a lot of learning happened in that game. Uh, it's been a while since we played against CTM, so that's also the thing. 
Bologna is still such an agenda. My God, is it such an agenda? Uh, what do y'all want to see? What's worth like testing? I don't sp like. I spend literally this week no time on uh, Netrunner on on JNet, so I don't know what people are playing. Like a lot of times, you'll go into games and just kind of spectate and be like, "Oh, that's a cool deck. That's a cool deck." But I haven't done it, so I'd love to know what y'all think is cool. Yo, Ken, how's it going? What's up? How you doing? Um, again, a lot, a lot of deck lists are coming up and being posted here. It's not that different if you go to always be running, right? Because it's the exact same thing. Is it .net? I don't, is it? It's a .com. It's .net. Okay. It's just running slow. Oh, it's broken. My internet's not down. No, it's not. Okay. Jackpots. Give me 17 credits. One over 18 percent GNK. Man, I don't like jackpot at all. All right. It is. Oh, this deck still has pad tap. So this GNK wasn't in the med, the modern meta. Uh, man, pad tap again. We called this jank glue last time we talked about it. But like, just losing pad tap hurts so many people. Just like on the side. Uh, obviously, criminal is a big hit, but like a lot of people will spend three influence on this, and it makes them a lot worse. And they start playing things like jackpot, I guess. Uh, I feel like Adam's probably okay. A bit harder to run, to play. Dirty Laundry, Sim Hack, a Laborites. I don't know if you need recursion in this list, do you? Liberated is okay. I like Career Fair more than a lot of that. It gets cards out of your hand in the early game. Single No One Home, that's a cute tech card. Cards like this can win you games easily if you, you pull the right thing. A single turning wheel, which should be fine because you have a, you still have that, um, what's it called? Your directive that helps you with multi-axis or like multi-axis and like smart R&D axes. This looks, list looks fine. People like seeing atom lists. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what's the cheapest thing that we can put in instead of pad tap? We already have three Rizekis. What is the easiest pad tap substitute? Tapworm is like what? Two credits? Two influence? Sorry. Two influence? Career fair? Yeah, career fair seems okay. How many targets do we have? Literally most of them. Yeah, career fair seems really easy. Let's try this with the career fair. We have Angolo, we have Odore, yeah, I guess we have the virtuals, so this is actually not bad. Uh, we have Paperclip, multi starter Rizeki. Seems fine, let's try it. Let's play some Jackpot. Yo, for a really long time, we've only played Corp. We just played a runner game, I'm aware, but whatever. New runner deck. Uh, Adam. The thing about career fair, like it gives you economy, but it doesn't slow the corp down, which is so good. Uh, <laughs> runner, boo. Yo, what up, Corey? That doesn't look right. Oh, there you go. Okay. So the thing with Adam is I find Adam to be very feast or famine in the early game. With your console brain chip, it needs to be like that, right? Like if you don't get an early agenda, you don't have a big hand size, you don't get your free card draw. So like that early game aggression, you either have to get, you have to pressure it pretty hard and or get lucky. I think your weakest matchups, anything that's just like hates on directives, like we do have Netscape, which is a problem, um, but you don't see that really. Um, it's not the worst. Against Turning Wheel. Ooh, RP, that's gonna be a problem. I'm imagining this is acid spam. That's gonna be a huge problem. We're not that good at assets. Thanks, you too. So against assets, what do we want? We want something that we can face check into, like an Ungolo is pretty expensive. We're not going to take always be running. I'm going to take the standard. Opening hand is Logic Bomb, Dirty Laundry, Double Daily Casts. That's probably good enough that we can do Laundry, Cast, Cast, Credit, Logic Bomb. That's probably fine. Uh, a lot of these lists would run Scrubber back in the day just because there was a lot of assets and we're forced to trash access that we access. I don't know whether RP can play proper Glacier maybe but like i think a lot of times this is like flower sermon or some sort of prison deck which is going to be a problem if we don't get our hand size up i'm putting miss bones in every runner deck now yeah it's good i feel like you can probably get away with scrubber i feel like miss bones is like what two three influence All right they didn't do anything this turn so we'll just set up running archives we got to see the top card of their deck give them some, uh, some information engram flush no surprise there we'll just do that 
that and because we get a free card draw we'll just click for a credit we'll start next turn with seven credits and a logic bomb we could have even installed one of these bad boys but they know we have it they know what we draw so it's important to keep that in mind based on how they play i was hoping to see more adam in your nemic games so i had an adam list that i played last time the problem is like it's a 50 card deck we're pretty sure this is engram flush they're on three credits how scared are we we need to trash this i will face tech any amount of damage at three credits engram flush would have to call resource no we're going straight hq they can't fire snare Oh, no, they can. Shit, they have five credits. Come on, you. Don't kill us. Aiki, that's fine. And we don't want to do a logic bomb because it ends our turn. So losing both logic bombs, I think, would be the worst. Oh, so we drew. Oh, wow. The two cards we drew, we got trashed. That's so weird. I was like, please fire this. And then they didn't. Top of the deck is team sponsorship, so this is an acid deck. We still have House of Knives, and Rashida gets trashed. We have to. So we're going to start checking the stuff and ripping their board apart. That's why, like, this early daily cast is so important. It's another Rashida. What a turn! And we get our clickless card draw down. Brain chip in hand. Hand size plus one. It looks like it's going to be a, a damage kill deck, a prison deck of the House of Knives. So, like, the sort of thing that's running that uh, DNA synth, whatever it's called. That's what it's called, right? Yeah, that was a turn, huh? Yeah, the Nemec game, we had an add-on deck that was 50 cards. And we probably wanted to play it again. But, like, the directives aren't implemented, so that's kind of difficult. There's a lot of things that I wanted to play that were a lot harder to play on JNet. So, like, Theta Link, I think that's what it's called. The NBN where you play the top of your R&D face up. Like, that, it's so good. Product Condenser, thank you. But, like, we couldn't play it. I'll draw once. We can let this get through. It's unlikely to be that good. So we go this, we're forehand size. So we want to do this, this head. So we can draw once more. That's good. And we'll just do this so we get click this card draw. Oh, Rizeki's so good. All right, we just need to draw into an Angola, which can be pretty easy if we emerge in creativity it. Cost us seven. I don't know what server three is. It might be a Prana. But like they probably have cards in hand. We know that they have a team sponsorship. It could be here. And we know this is an Engram flush. And they're probably on, uh, oh, we should probably check these. They're not really forcing us to do anything here. I think we can just click for a credit. I thought we were going to draw more, but that happens later. Excuse me. So, like, we got two Rashidas out, which is the biggest deal. They could have scored a naked agenda there and then, like, done team sponsorship, something like that. I think we're going to poke R&D. We just need to keep every Sundew down. So much of their money, even they, they're probably on a, what's it called, Maryland's. So we're going to start checking things here. That's good. That's really good. So we'll run R&D. Force a res, hopefully. It'll be an Ike or Engram plush, something cheap. Yagura. They have Mamba Temple. Okay, that's a good res. So now they can res four. It's a Crick. That's fine. They can bring back any of these, but we can trash any of them. It's cheaper than breaking it. We have dirty laundry. So Rashida's coming out. It's in server seven. We definitely want to trash that. It's a sundew. Yes. Okay, so we'll trash this. They don't have snare money. We'll just trash everything. Honestly, I kind of want server three to go down. So five or six chat. Five or six, what are you thinking? Okay, well, that solves it. It's six. It has to be six. We're not trashing this. And our money is dried up. That's another sponsorship. We're already here. That's the problem. But I don't think we trash it. Unless it's an agenda, which they can't afford to score it. Ingram Flush is what? Two to res? I think. Ingram Flush is so good. It's so ridiculous. Two to res. Okay. So they did double credit install and survey. And Adore. Haven't seen it a century yet, but they could be on Sai Santan or Kamainu. Does this install from anywhere? Hardware from your grip. Search your stack for program. Install it, lowering its install cost. Okay, so we couldn't. We I think in Golo we just do. In Golo is like four credits to get through click crick, right? Let me check. I don't know the numbers. I think it's two to boost, but it's also one to break. Okay. 
So here's seven to get our creativity down. That's pretty bad. We could list Gengar and Flush, but if they hit program, it's kind of bad with the Dory. We'd have to labor rights it. I think we'll just force them to spend money. I think Gengar and Flush this. We really want to get another agenda stat. They call resources kind of bad. We lose logic bombs, but like logic bombs are hard in this matchup because we're RP. We have to interact with centrals and we can't end our turn running centrals. It's good if we like panic and see something on top of R&D. Yeah, this is fine. They named a vent. All right. They hit a stim hack and it laborates, so we have no more recursion. Oh, they got to do creativity too. Yeah, they did. Wow, interesting. Top of the deck is a Mumba Temple. Okay, we'll check server eight. We need more drip economy. We're not gonna be able to keep up with them. House of Knives, huge steal. So we don't know what server four is. And our hand size is now five. What? Our hand size is bigger than five now. Wow, I think they could have scored that out. They got greedy. Unless they're like gonna philotic us in some horrible way, but our hand size is gonna be huge. We just need to play the Dory so we don't get hit by like a really bad uh, Koenu when our hand size is like a billion. That Rizeki is really good. Yeah, that was really surprising. I think they had the money to do it. I feel like House of Knives definitely means uh, Prana Condenser because their economy has been uh, struggling otherwise. We also could consider like, oh no, we don't have it anymore. One of these is gonna be a Sundew, right? No, we've seen two Sundews. All right. Nothing to career fair. We'll draw once. There you go. This is going to be a Rashida. We can't throw out the paperclip. We're not going to get a free card draw. Rongi, what up? They never had the money? Yeah, they really didn't. That's a Mumba that we knew on the top of the deck, and that's a Jeeves, so they're going to be triple click. I don't think they can triple install. We have to get some HQ pressure on here. We really do. And we can always like last click, use a logic bomb to get through HQ, which I think we should. Like they've been drawing a lot and we get double access on HQ. There's probably like uh, the winning double Obakata in hand. I actually don't think we care about our hand. I think we play a Dory and we just smash HQ. They do have snare money, but whatever. This will show us the top of R&D too. And this doesn't end the run by any means. They don't have shovel effects. We just don't want to lose this. We don't want to draw. All right, so we hit Paperclip and Logic Bomb. That's fine. We could die to double, no, they can't afford double snare. We could die to like snare plus fetal or something. Top of the deck, let's see. MC Austerity Policy, okay. That's some influence. Engram Flush, Engram Flush, ooh, okay. We'll take 11 down and we'll probably take Jeeves down. Actually, I don't know, Fire Weaponization. Okay, that's how they build up their, their prison combo. Uh, okay. So that's why Jeeves needs to go down. This is economy. I feel like Jeeves is probably not as important as their Mumba Temple. They, they're they going to duck their Mumba Temple into their team sponsorship. They want to raise their Engram Flush. What do we trash? I think we trash Jeeves. I actually don't know here. So Mumba Temple will give them one credit and it helps them like res their ice. And they're, yeah, we'll do the temple. We can hopefully hobble off next turn. Like we know they have ice in their hand, so the res, yeah, there we go, the res that. They'll probably austerity us. Ooh, that's pretty good. Jeeves feels more. Jeeves is definitely more versatile, especially with the four-two scoring plan. But we're on game point, so we just want to get our, our economy keep continuing to go. Yeah, okay, that's probably an Engram flush. So now this is where you want to trash Jeeves. But with the Angola, we could probably threaten something here. It is four to get through this, which is wild. Oh, they're icing up. So that's Engram, Engram, maybe. Yeah, chat's saying Jeeves. Yeah, maybe Jeeves is okay. Austerity, so we only have fewer clicks. That's fine, we have pretty good click compression. We have a lot of MU. So they're not gonna do anything until next turn. Next turn we have to set up. I'm just gonna totally forget that we don't have enough clicks to do like, we have to do N'Golo, like Dirty Laundry HQ, run server 12. We're making three credits a turn and we have Logic Bomb for server 12, so like, Whatever. We just have to keep the austerity down. And the longer austerity goes, the more cards they're going to have in their hand. Wow, their economy is really struggling. 
Okay, so I think we have to go off this turn because of Jeeves. So we'll play that. We can't die to double snare. So we'll run HQ. We This is greedy. We don't need to do this by any means. So we'll fire the side game. We could probably pay one to draw one. I don't think we need to. We could have done. So we'll see two here on the top of the deck. It's a Maryland. Engram. Jeeves. Oh, we have to trash the Jeeves. Oh, fuck. We should have paid one for the side game. Oh, that's a huge misplay. We still have five credits, though. We can do it. Yeah, if we paid one for the side game, we would have two more cards that we would have to trash the Jeeves. All right, so this we can pay. Uh, we're just going to logic bomb this. It's fine. I don't want to break it. And then we, if we break it, we can't trash this. They could be playing that like brain damage thing. I, I don't think they have the influence for it. There's like a card that says if you trash a card, either take a brain damage or like lose three clicks. We can definitely take the brain damage. Our hand size is eight. And now we can probably buy time. Like they can score one agenda. As long as it's not viral, we'll be okay. And like we're seeing the top of our ID. They drew a Marilyn. We know they have an Engram in hand. So we know two half of their hand. Now we can just camp liberated. Okay, here I think we trash the Jeeves. And there's one card in hand. I think we run archives? Let's see what they call before we break, right? Events is probably good. Riot Suppression. I got top four regional with that card. Hell yeah. Were you playing Assets, fam? They named Event. Okay, so we will break it. Crick. Okay, no good. So we can check one of these. I think we want to trash Jeeves, if anything. So we can do Liberated Run Jeeves, because Viral Weaponization is the problem here. We could even probably stim hack. I don't think our hand's particularly that good. The logic bomb's the best card. How many Jeeves have we seen? This is the second Jeeves. I think we just trashed Jeeves. Do we logic bomb this? Or sorry, do we uh stim hack this? Actually, we probably should have just logic bombed. Yeah, that's smarter. Click denial, sick. Cold site enhanced login, Mason MCA. Hell yeah. So this is our panic button. We trash Jeeves, they can't score viral. And if they score viral, it's pretty bad because of team sponsorship, so we want to stop the score. Also could be a Flotic though. We might actually die to Flotic. No, we're gonna No, we die to Flotic. No, it does four damage. Because we'll draw a card. Yeah, okay. If this is a... Temp oh, okay, it's a Maryland. We should have known that. We saw that card. But that could have been like uh, prison into uh, into something. Yeah, there you go. We don't die. Shit, if we, uh, if we stim hacked, we would have died there. We could have stim hacked and won. So we have to spend some clicks drawing. Lost the career fair. That's a bummer. It's a mumble temple and installs a card in server 10. So we don't know this, but they don't have... They're, well, they actually will have the money to score out. That was close. I probably we should have charged the server, honestly. Low testing made an appearance. Okay, so we have to draw so we don't die. Jackpot? I don't think that's worth it. <laughs> yeah, they thought it was going to be lethal. I think we're so far ahead. As long as we just keep our head. Excuse me. We'll be in an okay spot. They still have a lot of work to do, but it could get away from us. They only have four credits. I think we just need to credit up and get our free card draw. Yeah, that's a, that's a good draw. Jeeves and Temple. There you go. There's a Temple. Oh, did it say it was Jeeves and Temple? Oh, shit. It did. We're stupid. Yeah, it was. We had perfect information. Thanks, Parallel. All right. Now we hit HQ. They just drew a lot. And there's no way the server is safe. We have a logic bomb. Server 15, unknown card. Okay, so we have to check that. Three cards a turn seems to be pretty good. 
Oh, excuse me. That's, oh, this is huge. If we score this, we can't die if we install this. So this is going to see three cards, like two from hand, top of the deck. So the chance of us winning is pretty high. Sysenton, that's a pretty bad res against uh, Adori. Anansi, Crick, okay. Bioethics, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and here it's probably the Jeeves, right? Or the Marilyn. Marilyn means that they won't draw with Sysenton, and Sysenton's a pretty, pretty bad draw for them. I think we actually trashed the Jeeves, right? I think we goofed this last turn. We shouldn't have. It makes it so much harder for them to score four twos, and I think we might have all the three-point agendas because they have two more of these and then probably something else, so we'll trash this. And then next turn, we have to like credit Liberated, unfortunately, which is ugly. We know they have an Anansi. We know they have a Crick. I don't know. This could be Sting. Oh, Austerity, of course. All right. That's fine. Now we can do nothing. Like, they're not threatening the board. The next turn. Did they, I think, wait, can you score a 4-2 from hand with Austerity on double advancement? Like, okay, next turn you hit it once, so you got two clicks. You trash it, so you're one click, and you gain five. Yeah, so you can. We have to pressure it this turn. So maybe this was the wrong time to do it. This is probably the wrong time to install this, because we lose our whole hand. How does, what's the text on this? Do one net damage for each card in grip. So that's a once, right? It's not separate. So they could just like luck top deck it. So we just spend one click running here. I think we just tank the damage to save the money. Yeah, I think we do. We don't care. NOH blocks viral, okay. Yeah, I think we know we definitely do want that. Uh, well, let's play one. We do, oh, we hit the two cards we drew. What's the chance of that? We hit that twice. That's so low with six cards in hand. That's wild. We just need to see a card. Just Marilyn, show us an agenda. Sysenton, Sysenton. Fuck. So we could play no one home or. With 10 credits, we hope we can run this remote. And they're still gonna need four credits to score out. They have two here, yeah, we'll try it. This could be a huge mistake. Like no one home would just be probably the winning play, I think, most of the time. Yeah, I think no one home is probably better. It just prevents us from losing. <laughs> right, like they can score out the four two, it's fine. They're still not on game point. Well, they're kind of on game point. Or there are indeed, their centrals are in a pretty bad spot. Ooh, we dropped Caddy Jones too. Two of them. <laughs> That's good. All right, austerity policy. So we're going to hit HQ again. Oh, no, they're popping off. So it looks like they're going to score out a, a viral. No, oh, the double team sponsorship is annoying. Oh, man. We keep not dealing with this stuff. The MCA does help. Oh, they're just going to give us two clicks. Okay. That can't be worth it. Not enough clicks for viral? Really? I thought there would be. Because they have three clicks, so they add a counter on it, they pop it, so then they gain five, so they do install four advance. I think they can. So now we only have two clicks, so we have to run HQ, run server 13. Oh, they drew first click. Okay. So this is probably Taisantan. I think we'll just run HQ, run server 13. We're not going to pay one here. This is probably a brain, what's it called? Neuroethics. Team sponsorship, Jesus. Oh, fuck, we have to trash that. Uh, okay. Could be a snare here, actually. It would be pretty bad, but I don't know if they have snares. You would have seen one by now, right? Mumba Temple. Whose money is more important than the other person's money? I feel like our money is more important. This only represents one credit to them next turn. Eh, it's fine. 
Ah. It's a free res. Oh, it's actually more than one credit. It's two credits next turn. But I don't know what they can do with it. I think if we trash the team sponsorship, we'd be a better spot. We just got to keep slamming centrals. So we saw Crick. New card. They advanced. Well, uh, you guys know the drill here, huh? Probably should find a time to put down the turning wheel, I'll be honest. I forgot we had that. We also probably could take the net damage. I don't think we have to spend four credits to avoid two net damage. We definitely could have taken the net damage there. Yeah, I think that's a mistake. Oh, Bacata. Okay. I think we can win now. Don't have a stim hack. I don't think there's anything to do besides run it. And this doesn't matter. I don't think there's any shuffle ability. We have to mistake, right? So we can just logic bomb whatever this is. I think it's a Sai Santando or an Anansi. And then we can um, let this fire. I don't think they have any way to shuffle. It's a Sai Santan. Make it a code gate. I don't think it matters. I think we break this for three credits. That should be a good game. I don't think there's a shuffle ability. We were looking for agendas. They have to be Obakadas here. It's three credits with this. It's not a great res. They didn't res it for a lot. And this we can actually can break. We could logic bomb it. Whatever. But none of this ends the run, of course. This does hurt. It makes it harder to steal Obakada. All right, about time. Good game. It took us a while there to close it. Yeah, they definitely thought they had lethal here with the Flotic um, when we uh, get that free Atom draw. That's really annoying whenever you have a kill deck and you run into Atom, they keep drawing there. So what else is left in their deck, right? Like they have three more viral weaponization, two more viral weaponizations, and then two Obakadas, right? Three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, so there's only uh, one, two, four more agendas in these 18 cards. So it's pretty high chance. Wish they had one more agenda to score with the MCA though. You might have one sooner than Ice for Days in HQ. Well played. Hey, thanks for the game. Uh, and that's kind of all you need. You need some Rezekis, and if you trash their economy, there's not much they can do. Now, it kind of got away from us. The fact is, like, Angola is really bad, inefficient, at least, at dealing with this cheap ice. But most of it, most everything else is, right? Like, Amina breaks Ike, I think, for two? No, probably for four, actually. So it's hard to get something that breaks through this efficiently. This stuff is just so well-costed for stuff that doesn't end the run. And we're running out of cards. We still need to steal Obakot at some point. This is the matchup where you think like, you know, Kamainu would be so much better when we have a huge hand size, but like that's why you play Adore for what? Two, two influence? Two XP? Which is pretty good. I wonder what this is. And it wasn't actually, it didn't look like it was, uh, so it was two things there. Like that was kind of meant to be more of a prison kill deck. Like they were running the bioethics and they were running viral weaponization, which does happen in the other deck, but I thought it was going to be like a flower sermon deck with political dealings. But like both of those decks, if you tear apart their board, they really don't have a strong win condition, I don't think, at least. All right. Is there anything else we want to try? What else looks okay? 2xp, I make that mistake all the time. Yeah, it happens a fair bit. Hey, Nana. I'm also playing Arkham, and I always say card and credit during the upkeep. There's nothing that's going to stop me from saying card and credit. It's too hard. I always have to, I keep apologizing about two. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, resource. We haven't built a deck in a while, but it takes time. It takes a long time to figure out something that's really good. It's so easy to just end up building, like, you know, slowly improving it, and then you get to a meta deck. This is not the time for a wild janky Netrunner. I really hope it is. I really hope someone competes. The same way that, like, we saw Sid play at the North American Continentals with a list that people would, would never would seen coming. Like, that's always the funnest. Hey, Maddie, Nanako's cuddling, but left when you poured the water. She loves this bottle of water. I will pour water and she will climb over the keyboard just to see what this water is about. And she doesn't drink water. Like, I've never seen this cat drink water. And yet she loves the bottle so much. Maybe she just likes moving water. <laughs> Crying emojis in chat. Take a winning deck and jank in a few cards. Hey, watch me make a deck a lot worse very quickly. That was actually kind of like the list that we played uh, with the CTZ list. Okay, this looks interesting. So this is an outfit deck. 
that's running Marcus Batty into program destruction, kind of like that you've seen maybe out of uh, Scorpio's lists. I'd play this. Can you test my agon if you're in that kind of mood? Yeah, Giles, totally. We'll do it. Share it if you'd like. I like playing Agon Fusion. This actually seems kind of fun. Archer, Colossus, Rototurret, Sapper, Double Trebuchet, Tethonium, Spiderwork, Bulwark, Border Control. So one of the things that I never fully understood is that like a lot of people that try to do program destruction decks will be like, I'm going to run only barriers so that I can destroy their like Fractor and then win. But for me, it's always makes sense to be like, okay, maybe don't play. I don't know. These are obviously all good with uh, Marcus Batty, but like play two end the run code gates so that if you do trash the decoder, you have a chance of winning. Like, I don't know why you always want to pin it on one or the other. Flexibility is always good. Check rip. Sorry. <laughs> good game. Yeah, so that I don't get, but this looks kind of fun. Scorpius is something I played competitively for a bit, or at least I can hope competitively. What's this draw like? Opening hand. Uh, we probably keep it against not criminal. Against criminal, we would yeah, we'd have to hope to draw spider web, so we couldn't just like straight hostile out because of diversion. So against criminal, we'd probably like ice up HQ, probably draw credit. Yeah, draw. Oh, not credit. Draw I, hedge funds. We would have drawn before the spider web. Then from here, we would trash Rashida maybe on HQ. Probably trash that. I don't know. And then we would square the hostile. Then from there, we'd have to do like Archer Remote and start up with an Archer Remote. And Archer, Marcus Batty is good enough against Inside Job. And then IPO. And then from there, probably just Jam City Works. Yeah, that actually seems like reasonable. Seems kind of fun. Marcus Batty is pretty all in of a card. I don't know whether we have the economy to like do Trojan Horse, but it's scary. We don't have any kill. So like the dedication ceremony is, I, I, in my mind, probably not worth it. Like it makes City Works a bit better. I don't think it makes City Works that much better. It's like, what? Two more damage? Is that really that good when our win condition isn't tied to it? I never like dedication in a deck that can't use it too well. I guess we do have Colossus, but like it has to be rezzed. Thanks, Jazz. Boop and Fusion. All right. Hamitsu Baku. Tell me about that. Hamitsu Baku is actually kind of really cool in Agon Fusion, right? Because he returns to hand and then it's an unrezzed card. That's exactly what you want. Unfortunately, you can't get into the innermost, would be good. Being trying, been trying tempo rig shooter folds pretty hard to red crim. This list or something else? Kyobu precog manifold. Okay, so that works weller with the four twos. Reverse to counts. Oh, this is wild. Okay, let's look at this list. Ice. We have uh not that many ice. Five eighths plus three. So that's okay. Just my opinion right now. Looking at it, and we'll try it in a second. I think we have too few ice. Agonfusion is an ability that gets stronger the more ice you have just because you can destroy things, right? Like you can trade your ice for an end run ability. So a lot more people will run a lot more ice in the list. In terms of taxing ice, the barriers won't do it. The border control is obviously very good. The Hamitsu Baku is like, it's an end the run barrier. It's not zero strength. So that's interesting. Uh, we have Crick, which is probably not good. Ike seems nice. Uh, I don't know. DNA Tracker, okay. Engram Flush, fine. Macrophage makes sense with the Sandbox list, but I never love this, especially in a deck that doesn't run that much ice, because if you draw it early against like Link Runners, it's garbage. It's straight up garbage. And less people are playing Amakua. Simple Rig is obviously very good for positionality and Anansi, but it's an interesting suite. Jazz says it needs more ice, but I kept only drawing ice at 18 ice and had no money. Okay. Uh, upgrades, Biovault, Lacosta, Costa is really good, Chrysium, Cyberdex. Uh, I'm interested whether Chrysium is necessary in the list on the basis that you already have a built-in like end the run ability with Agon Fusion, but I guess you can't ever be too careful. You also have Biovault. I say that, but I keep always getting Apocalypse and Agon Fusion list for some reason. Uh, double NGO, Rashida, Reverse Accounts. So Reverse Accounts seems really strange, right? Like it's definitely okay. You can do install advance advance. Uh, the thing is, like, a lot of times I reckon you want to NGO front more than this. And ruining the runner's economy isn't, like, I don't know if it's a good tempo play. It's probably not bad. Like, you could do install, advance, 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 do this. But that's, like, so much money. And, like, if the deck doesn't have money, spending clicks and credits, like, clicks and credits is so expensive. It's like spending two credits, right? Because you'd be clicking for a credit or doing something else. Just to remove their money when you probably can just go fast enough and play, like, Marcus Baddies. That seems a bit weird to me. Uh, I haven't played this, obviously. Rashida, Hedge Fund. Hyobu Precog Manifold. This card is probably better than I think it is. Uh, especially with, like, Lacosta. It's, it's sick. It's You can even play Global Food Initiative, I guess, with this. Um, 
and probably it's scary like it does make remotes harder to run as long as there's like two pieces of ice so like the tax isn't inconsequential this is probably not the worst card but like yeah maybe we'll play it more i don't know it's more for something to jam when you have La Costa and nothing else. Oh, yeah, you're right. With La Costa, that's why Thanos is saying La Costa. Yeah, with La Costa, I guess you do get free value with it. But, like, wouldn't you always like a Bio Vault more than reversed accounts? That's my imagination, at least. That's what I would guess, is that you always want a Bio Vault. Bio Vault seems really good. Maybe that's just IPO slots you want. I don't know. I think it's fascinating. I would love to see La Costa reversed accounts. I definitely want to give this a shot. Also, if you want money, like... There is a chance, and I don't know how good it is, a Cyberdeck Sandbox always feels a bit feast or famine to me. And I guess Corporate Sales Team is the same thing, but you could consider like running just universally better ice than Macrophage, and maybe you don't need the CVS, and then run more Corporate Sales Teams. I, like, I feel like the stock of Corporate Sales Team has gone up so much now that there's no Patap. Like, I think Corporate Sales Team is proper really good. Spend clicks for credits. I've only had that one card from Saturday's Custom Cards. <laughs> Yeah, this is fascinating though. I'm definitely excited to try it. 17 influence as well. I, I feel like the ice definitely is a bit too little. Like I think a lot of Ag Infusion decks run 18 plus ice just because again, any ice is technically an end the run. How do I copy this? I'll figure it out. There's also a chance that you can run, like we saw that in other Ag Infusion lists. Like there is, there's a chance that you could save influence and just run Obacata and then make that as like a tempo hit. Like, food is obviously very cool because then they have to steal four points. But uh, Obakata is worth testing. I'll be interested to hear if you did. I did have a timely public release over CST, but needed the money more than skateboard tricks. Yeah, TPR is just way too expensive. If TPR res the ice for free, yeah. But TPR does very little. Oh, actually, it's not that bad with Ag Infusion. The window is probably weird, though. I don't know what the timing window on public release is. Exchange of information deck. Yo, Jimmy, I wonder how good Sea Source is. I feel like Sea Source is pretty, pretty strong unless people are playing No and Home. Exchange of information is a really strong, strong card. Yeah, I feel like Corporate Sales Team is like a very strong agenda. Like SSL, obviously a 5 3 scored or stolen, but this gives you 9 credit, 10 credits if you score it. It's a 4 2. It's really easy to score with at La Costa. 10 credits is a lot of money. Ooh, Leela. It's a fair matchup. Vanity all the way. All right, opening hand against Leela. We want two ice. This is where, like, not having 18 ice will get you, but, like, 16, you probably can get two ice in your hand, right? Yeah, CST pre pat tap was nutty. All right, Border Control and HQ. Not the biggest fan of it with Leela, because generally if you spend it to stop a diversion, like, you've got nothing. But, like, against Leela... A lot of the time, like, we just have, uh, we can just bounce whatever eyes. I always feel like we need this for, for the room. We need border control for the remote, right? I feel like this hand needs an economy card, stat, or a La Costa. If we don't have either, we're in a bad spot. Yeah, this is a sketchy hand. We'll see if they're on Amaku. A lot of these lists aren't, like, N'Golo. Fucking hell. At least we do have this, but this is not that much better. I think we purge here. I think we do purge here. They get a whole free turn if we purge. I don't know what to do here. I never know whether you purge, excuse me, in this situation or not. Like if they had if they had a pat tap, we'd probably trash it. And that's basically like purging. Like pat tap credit credit is very similar to purging. Yeah, it sucks. That's not good. At least our economy is bad. Tobal says I would purge here. Okay. The other option was like to try and get the CVS into archives because they're probably going to poke it for uh, for um, Paragon. I think that was actually a fair play too. Let's see if this turn. Okay, this is really awkward if we don't have Lacosta. Well, let's top deck an IPO. We can't rush Rizeki. Oh shit. Okay. Well, we have a Lacosta now. And I imagine they actually might be on Sneak Door Beta if they're doing Fisk. That accelerated the game a wee bit. They have eight credits. Okay. You see, this is where, like, I would never put reverse accounts over Bio Vault in the remote. That's actually not true. 
Keeping the CVS actually has some point. I don't know that they're ever going to poke archives. Oh, diversion. Okay. So obviously we could just end the run here, but I think we're going to res border control for three. DNA tracker would have been so bad for them here. I'm surprised. But we only have five credits, so they could check this remote pretty easily. We can't really afford to res this. We actually could have maybe ducked the siphon. Oh, they're letting us res this. So if we res this three, we'll be on two. Then we can credit credit. Yeah, we can get away with this. Dimble rig is pretty good because they need a Mina or a Boomerang. That's hard. Yay, cards. <laughs> All right. Their economy hasn't been too good. Inside job, though, that's going to be a big deal. They only have one. Oh, they're going to have two cards with Paragon. So the question is whether they trash the Rashida or the Bio Vault. That's an interesting decision. Rashida, they're trashing. So we keep the Bio Vault. And one credit short there. They probably should have clicked for credit. I think that term is a bit too hasty from them. They could have clicked for credit there for sure. Because now we have a Bio Vault that we're going to fast res it. So they, it's a week to pull up, but it's good against Falsified. Oh, right, they're Leela. I totally forgot they were Leela. I thought we were playing against 4 and 9. I drew this. I'm like, oh, that's not good, is it? All right, we need money. I think, honestly, we, do, we just, like, do the CST, don't we? We could put another ice there. Uh, no, we'll just do the CST. The CST would be so important to get off here, especially that we don't. we can never advance it. Oh, fuck yeah. We are so good. Oh, wait, they get a bounce. Now we can slow roll this. How bad is the bounce? The bounce is really bad. <laughs> they can bounce next turn. We, we could have probably pushed the CST there, the corporate sales team. Man, if we did a thing that did trace six to trash jobs and connections. That was a dream somewhere. Oh, that's also good. So this is huge. This is 10 credits. And we can either repair their damage or plug the sandbox. I think we'll just plug the sandbox. Okay, this is the point where like I can never know if I can rely on macrophage. They're gonna try and rely on macrophage. Diversion, okay. Or not diversion, excuse me. They're fisking us. That's fine. Crazy on HQ is exactly what we want. Inside job, the remote. Do they have a third inside job? They use that biobot pretty well. Now they know it's an agenda. This was my paired opponent in the jumpstart tourney this week, and he dropped. Would you put me on a 3 3 sweeps? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So we can obviously score out here. But then we have a stupid amount of cards in hand. Just a silly amount. They don't have a Fractor just yet, but they did draw a fair bit that turn. I don't see this reversed. Uh, actually, next turn we could probably just jam it, but we have an NGO front, which is better. We're putting so much pressure on them. We gotta remember that we have this uh eye confusion ability. I'm gonna forget for sure. Uh, yeah, I'll throw the reverse though. I don't know. Spec order for paperclip. Alright, this is fine. They might pull up here. We don't have to I don't think we have to res the, the Chrysium. They're probably just gonna trash it. Reverse isn't as good with Caddy. Yeah, yeah. The fact that most of their money is offloaded is pretty bad. They hit Macrophage and Chrysium, and they're not trashing Chrysium. There could be a Paul up here. We could have res this to, to prevent Paul up, but it's just a Tapworm. Ooh, even resing that gets around Tapworm. Oh, but we're going to get a Purge here if we really want to. I think we do. Oh, my God. That's dirty. Like, look at that. Oh, so much tempo. Fuck, that's good. Purge virus counters. Screw up the Tapworm. Gain four. Get a bounce. They know we have Macrophages in hand. We're going to continue protecting this. We have the Chrysium for HQ. Wow, this is going okay for us. I don't think we're going to need this. And we have 10 credits. Oh man, like 10 credits off of this. They have Amina. They have it. Yeah, that was really nice. How bad is the numbers on Macrophage? Three thinking. 
So we res Macrophage. They have to boost two, four, six, and then another trace. Uh, okay, we'll res it. We lose a credit if they break all of it, but for them to break all of it, it's like eight credits. This is where Thimble Rig is a bit of a liability. <sighs> They're doing it. They only need one to get through the board of control, but then, like, once they spend so much money, they can't trash this shit. They're going to get one more back from Paragon, though. We got to remember it. Fire Unbroken. So these don't matter. They just care about the first one and the last one. But at least we won't lose a credit. She's a virus to trash? Okay. Get out, Tapworm. Okay, so we res this border control. They have to break for two, and then they can only trash the bio vault. I think we'll do it. It's a shame that we don't have a boop ability, but we can always just put another card in front of that. So we lose the bio vault. That's fine. We keep this bad boy. This is where reversed accounts would be okay, huh? They don't have a lot going for them right now. Got to advance something. Oh man, they really don't have a lot. I feel like we could get away with Rashida here. I feel like Rashida's way better for our game plan than anything else. Yeah, I think Rashida's much better. We could do credit install ice on R&D. I think that's fine. On HQ, we're pretty safe, right? Because we have the Chrysium. Why does it change the top card of archives constantly? They have I've had worsts in their list. Wow. Caddy, double Rizeki. Oh, I forgot they're on double Rizeki. That is uh, going to be... I forgot they had Rizeki. Okay. I feel like we pushed this thing. Purge for eight seems okay. Now, if we install this on server one, we're not gonna be able to IPO. Jaden shuffles face down archives now, so Runge can't tell the order. Jackson, that's what we've been asking for such a long time. That's fantastic. Oh shit, yeah, that's amazing. So we'll just put some garbage on here. Yeah, unfortunately we can't. Um, Yeah, and this is also gets around inside job if they have the third and final inside job. If we score this, like, it doesn't win us the game, but purge for eight. We can slow roll this thing, too. And then we put maybe a border control in there? I don't know. Okay, we got to think about this. If we score this, how bad is it for us? It's honestly not that bad. I think we can just score this. Or we can slow roll it. If they steal it, it's not that bad either. Uh, there's probably more aggressive lines there. Like we could have maybe advanced that card once, but then it looks kind of weird if we do it. This is fine. We can score this and throw out most of our hand. I honestly feel like those Fisks helped us more than hurt us by like a pretty significant margin. Well, they do have good money here. Labor rights. Ooh. They have data dealer. And they just brought back Fisks. Okay, so we're on a clock, so we're not going to waste another time. We're just going to go score this and get eight credits. Purge? Okay, thank you. Oh. They bounced that. That's fine. Uh, so we can bait them into the reversed accounts. It seems actually really fun. Okay, cards are not good. We don't want that. The Crick doesn't help that much. Uh, honestly, maybe the Rashida is better there. But we want something to double advance next turn. Um, and we don't need a Baku. We don't need a Baku box. Because they're going to try and Fisk us every turn now. Which probably helps us win anyways. I, this is where I wish we had another Bio Vault more than we had a Reverse Account. That's the last inside job. They didn't recur that, did they? No. They didn't. All right. Well, we lost everything.
<laughs> they're typing. <laughs> yeah, right? That's cool. Blueberry. No more inside jobs, right? Having Coast Online drawing a GFI will have you precog is great. Oh, I forgot we had precog. Yeah, but we can precog in just about any agenda as long as we don't draw GFI. But I forgot we had precog, and now we're short a Lacosta because we threw one out. I think Lacosta is one of the best cards in the deck. We shouldn't have thrown it out. Now the problem is like all the agendas are in R&D. What did I put here? A border control? That's not what we want. We actually probably wanted to uh, to put the Nancy. We could hedge fund here. Yeah, we probably want to. We have to res 16 crats worth of Nancy's if we're really pushing it. Yeah, there's a Fisk. That's good. That'll draw us into agenda. We don't need to fire Rashid's. Yeah, there we go. So if we draw the precog with the Rashida, actually that might be the right play. Uh, okay, we'll res the Nancy here. It's a single axis, and we'll, we will res the Chrysium. I think we can afford to. So how much is the Nancy? Five credits. Board control is two more. We have a small chance of hitting an agenda here. This prevents shenanigans. One in six, no! Do you actually mean the card precognition? No, I mean precog manifold. Having a res outside spider is what you want. Yeah, this is really good because we can bounce them into it for sure. Fuck, one in six, are you kidding me? Oh no, that's so bad. And then we bounce, they bounce Rashida perfectly. I'll draw once for an agenda. Oh, that's a card we have on the list. Fascinating. But like, we need to go fast because they're going to fisk us. That's such a bummer. So we have two precogs and like what? Five agendas in R and D? Shit, Caddy, you're seeing the matchups where Caddy is good. And they're gonna fisk us this turn as well, so they're just gonna slam something. Okay, we got it. We got too many though. Server one. Advance. Choose a server. We could choose HQ. I'm gonna risk HQ. I think we're gonna get a legwork here. But we can always like Okay, so we gotta throw some stuff out. Uh, the trashables, I think. So they can't trash and run back. Okay, so now there's another one. We're gonna draw a lot of agendas here. Yeah, I see, because there's so many agendas in the deck. So now they got a couple runs. We can board and control one of them. And they're gonna keep bouncing it. Legwork doesn't matter through Chrisium? No, you're right, it doesn't. They can go through this once more. They can also tank the damage. Like, they have seven cards in hand. It actually, it draws its cards, though. You d absolute dickhead. <laughs> yeah, well, 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 well. I think we lost. I think we have lost the game of Netrunner. That's good. That's really good. Fuck, we're forked so hard here. They're going to play a Sneak Door Beta, right? They don't have MU. They're just going to Fisk us when we lose. Yeah, we've lost. GG. Ah, we got Fisked. They can do it. That's a good list. Shit, that's good. Second Labor Rights? Ooh. I was not confident in their game plan. Got Rashida to death. Yeah, we did. But we have to hold on for a couple turns anyways. Um, Resonancy? Nothing we do matters. We can't flatline them. Yeah, so this is going to be online. When does this work? So we have to win this turn. Place one power counter on the black file. When there are three more power counters on the black file, remove it from the game. Okay, wait, no, we could win. We actually could win. I think? 
They have to bounce not. Oh, we have so much money. They have to bounce not the border control. Okay. No, no, we lose. <laughs> I forgot we lose. We lose. We lose. Yeah, hundred percent we lose. Oh man, do you know what actually would have uh, maybe won us the game? Uh, well, it wouldn't have won us the game. Uh, so they, yeah, they fisk us. They lost fix because uh, they labor rights fisked back. Uh, we, we could have potentially uh, got more life if we had the um, preemptive. Cool deck. Yeah, no, I thought this would count to three, and I forgot they didn't have another fisk. Fix the game. Yeah, the preemptive wouldn't have done it. Like it would have put three more cards in, and then we would have just drawn here. But we only have one preemptive. Uh, basically, drawing as little as, as possible would be good. But like, how many times did they fisk us? They fisked us, I think, five times. Oh, cheers! Oh, cheers! Well played. I was laughing at their fisks. We were set up, but like you saw this sort of like tempo that this deck goes. Like obviously, the black file is such a spicy card. We have no way to interact with that. But like, um, otherwise, like we're pretty good. Oh, cheers. Hey, take care. That's very kind. That's a cool ass deck. That's a cool ass deck. Oh man, I'm glad that we got fisked out. Uh, yo, Giles, this deck seems okay. Uh, you definitely need to do like a hundred games of testing or whatever to figure it out. I honestly don't know if the reverses are worth it. I feel like a bio vault is just worth so much more. Um, and maybe having a bit more ice is good. I feel like our ice isn't that taxing. It's like it, it, so much of it's draw order, right? Like it, the macrophages are pretty lame if you don't get this. So like maybe you just need more ice that ends the run. Like I think Enigma is much better than uh, than some of the ice. Like I'd rather play Enigma than Crick any day of the week. I'm aware that this is cute and make maybe protecting archives matters, but like Enigma seems pretty fine. But everything else looked okay, right? Everything else looked pretty all right. Oh, Hyobus are cute. Man, it's only one server. Of course it is. Thanks for sharing the deck list. Ugh. Man, I'm glad we got black filed out. Ooh, I wonder if that's good. That's an archetype. Ugh. That's going to be it for tonight. It's 1130. My stomach's not great, so I'm going to go have some water and some Tums and sit around for a bit until things normalize. Uh, to, to everyone we played games against tonight, thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks for the game. It's really cool. Needs tuning? Yeah, maybe, but I, I think you're onto something. I think that's a it's a it's fun to play too. The thing that I'd only worry about for the ag infusion is that like it is so intensive on making good decision and good piloting. Is that if I had to play seven rounds of that world, it's like I would goof up in a way that I would regret immediately after I did that. That could be a game loss. Like like that is a really high skill cap deck. I wouldn't be very apprehensive of bringing that into a long format tournament unless I did get the like 200 games in with it so that you're not like thinking too much when you're playing, right? Like when you're on autopilot, that's what you need to do with that sort of deck. Um, but you can get there, you definitely can. And I think it's definitely strong. I don't know what the meta looks like, I have no idea. Do you need a way to deal with black file? It's virtual, right? Netscape, let's go. Um, <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, that's largely it. Do check out, I mentioned this at the top of the stream, but YouTube, oh, it's, it doesn't, they don't have the vanity for it, but they get it. But like, uh, this came up before, Project Nisei has a YouTube channel. So if you want to watch the Continentals, they're all on that. Jao says, I played Ag a lot, lol. I played a lot of Ag, but you're right. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's something that you can definitely miss up the ability. Uh, do check this out if you want to see the Continentals. It's just Google YouTube search Project Nisei. That's it for today. Uh, we'll be back next week. And then a week after that is Worlds, which is going to be really exciting. So be get ready for a lot of Netrunner coming at you. If you're playing, please sign up. Uh, I'm please play. Like, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of side events. Again, if you're not a competitive player, it doesn't matter. It should be a great time. It, it always is. It always is. So do enjoy that. I'm going to answer some YouTube comments. And that should be me for the evening. Everyone who's watching, hanging out, checking VOD. Uh, hopefully you're having a good time. It is beginning of autumn. Uh, it's getting cold out. And I like it. Take care, y'all.